Adequate notice of this meeting of the Berkeley Heights Board of Education was given as required by the Oakland Public Meetings Act as follows on January 8th, 2024. Notice of the Board of Education meeting schedule was sent to the Star Ledger, the Courier News, and was also provided to all schools, PTOs, pre PTO presidents, the BHEA president, and posted at the administration building. A copy was also provided to the public library and filed with the municipal clerk. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ms. Akiri. Here. Ms. Bradford. Here. Dr. Forager. Here. Mr. Hyman. Here. Mrs. Jolly. Here. Mrs. Kana? Here. Ms. Penna? Present. Ms. Stanley? Present. Ms. Judis? Here. Hopefully I said that correctly. And Mr. Brown? Here. At this time, since the last meeting that we had, we did not have a vote for a president nor for a vice president, and that motion was tabled. This evening, we're going to go and open floor for nominations for president and take votes. Uh, I'd like to open the floor for nominations. Uh, do we have a first and a second? I would like to nominate Angela Penna for president. Well, I just needed a first and oh, second to open the floor. Sorry, totally missed that. That's okay. Um, I've, yes, yeah, so moved. Do we have a second? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. At this time, I'd like to open the floor. Well, I'd like to have nominations for a president. Now I'd like to yes. nominate Angela Pennant for president. Okay. And I'd like to nominate Ms. Diptikana for president. Do we need a second on those nominations? No, we do not. Thank you. No, we do not. Okay. Um, do we have any other nominations besides the two that were just brought to the floor? Okay, seeing none. Uh, can we, I'm sorry, um, can we discuss and make a statement in favor and support or do we need to go straight to vote? If you'd like to make, make a statement, you're more than welcome to. I would, thank you. Um, so I'm a little more prepared this time, so I put some stuff down on paper. Um, so as most of you are aware, I have been um, coming to the Board of Ed meetings for almost two years now, um, less maybe two meetings that I've missed. Um, I've asked questions, I've, um, you know, in, at the meetings and in emails, and my decision in terms of who to support um, for president is based on what I've observed and how Mrs. Khanna and Mrs. Penna voted, as well as, you know, I guess in my opinion, my view of the state of the district. Um, while it's true that experience is important, um, it's not the sole defining aspect of leadership. Uh, leadership is also being able to admit mistakes. Leadership is being able to provide support to a board member who's being falsely accused, called out for not completing training, or for not doing bills. Um, and I'll let Mrs. Khanna address that when she um, when it's her turn to speak. However, even though, um, you know, just a point about the training, you know, we have a board member who completed training and well and beyond, but that still doesn't um, mean that, you know, there won't be any poor decision making, such as, um, you know, as the, the highly proper email that was circulated as well as a petition. So, um, so I, you know, so everything, you know, I don't want to belittle Mrs. Penna's accomplishments. Um, I, but I, you know, just looking at the voting record, 
you know, I've observed that Mrs. Pena um, votes to support changes in policy that restrict transparency. Um, there's continue the seemingly unlimited use of the attorney. There was uh, support for a budget that I think uh, was not really favorable with the teachers when it came to especially cutting supervisors. Um, and I know there's a lot of work done behind the scenes that we're not privy to, but at the end of the day, it's the decisions that are made at these meetings, right, and that shape the direction of the district. So, um, and I think that, you know, Ms. Pena was maybe well able to steady the ship um, and, you know, have orderly meetings. It doesn't mean the ship's headed in the right direction. So Ms. Kana, as we said, doesn't have as much board experience as Mrs. Pena. However, she has demonstrated um, leadership in ways I think that are important. She's very thoughtful. She's not afraid to ask tough questions in public. Um, and I think even when her fellow board members try to silence her. Uh, she supports a budget that focuses on the students rather than on legal bills or administrative overhead. Her professional experience, I think, is actually a plus um, and positions her to work well with any public officer, either at the, you know, at the local county or state level. Um, and, you know, in personal note, I ran for the BOE because I felt that, you know, change was needed. And I think that um, Mrs. Kana's perspective um, aligns to the changes I like to see for our district. Thank you. Anybody else like to provide comments? Sure. Um, so Angela Pena um, took the board leadership this uh, past year. And uh, anytime you take leadership positions, right, there is a transition period where you have to get to know the role and uh, get to know how to handle the board and how to handle the meetings and how to work together. And I think Angela and Pena showed that she did that work, that hard work this year. And this year we have a really big year. Um, we need to hire a new superintendent, possibly an interim superintendent. And that is a really big job. Um, and we need somebody who, one, already has the experience in the position, so that way we don't spend time just trying to get used to that um, transition of leadership. Um, we also know that Angela Pena has worked with the NJSBA very closely because of her role last year and also doing the board goals which means that Angela Pena had already spoken to the NGSBA about next steps for the superintendent search, um, knowing things like, hey, you know, asking different areas that have already gone through superintendent searches. Well, what have they done? Who have they used, right? Angela Pena has already done some of that work, right? And she's already knows that the NGSBA costs more than sometimes a third party. Right. And so some of these things, this knowledge is needed this year in particular. I also just think that um, some of these uh, ideas that we need change um, is interesting because this has been a couple years of really big change for our district. Um, and change is hard and sometimes it's uncomfortable and not everybody's going to like it. But we have done a lot of change and change takes time. Right, It takes a lot of time for us to make big changes. And so I think that if we give Angela Pena time to continue in this role, not only will we be able to do the superintendent search and do a good one, because this is going to be hard, right? Last meeting was a three hour meeting for a reorg meeting. That is not normal. And superintendents will watch that, right? And they will have a hard time coming to our district, right? I think a resident said they're gonna have to get combat pay. Finding a new superintendent is going to be a difficult job. The NGSBA at the workshops this um, fall, they said, say goodbye to your families when you're doing a superintendent search. This is time consuming for all of us, but especially for the board president. And we need the relationships that Angela Pena already has, not only with the NGSBA, but with our current superintendent, with our assistant superintendent, with the BA, and with other organizations, including the teachers union. So this is an extremely important role and is an extremely important year. So all of us could be board presidents, right? We're all leaders in some way, right? Some of us are different, right? Have different leadership qualities, but all of us are here because we're leaders, right? But I believe Angela Pena is the right one for the district, right? Because this isn't about Angela or Dipti. This is about what's best for the district. And at this time, I believe Angela Pena is the right one because of what we need to do this year. Thanks. We have any other comments from anyone else on the board? 
Hi. I just want to say that um, in the last year or in the last two years, we've seen a huge turnover in our district. We've seen a lot of experienced teachers leave. We've seen a lot of hiring take place. And some of the questions that I have asked coming to this very meeting is, how are we making these hiring decisions? I think last year we gave the superintendent, which was a pretty normal uh, resolution to give her the power to you know, pick um, replacement uh, teachers or somebody that needs to be hired in the summer. And we saw that two key administrative positions were hired within a span of 10 days. And then some of the appointments that happened, it felt like they were musical chairs. We appointed somebody as to be in an administrative director position. And within six weeks, we also approved that person to move from that position to a different administrative position. And these decisions were overseen. I think the key role of a Board of Ed member is oversight. And when these items were questioned, how did these hiring decisions happen within in summer when the superintendent had this power and who was involved in the interview process, we got very ambiguous, uh, almost like cryptic answers as one board member was present, one parent was involved. And we are, the district is seeing the consequences of this. So we want a leader who's transparent, who walks the talk, who doesn't let parents and the community uh, speak up or cuts them off and then says, okay, you're, thank you for your questions, okay? You're gonna get an answer, when? Via email? Nope, didn't happen. Are we, is there a backup process or a follow-up that, okay, I'm gonna answer your questions at the next follow-up meeting? Never happened. And the budget process, we've been promised for the last three years, I think two years, leading up to Mrs. Pena's presidency that we are gonna have a open public meeting and then literally people have to beg for it and we still didn't get it. And last year, I think at the tentative budget approval day was also when we also saw, uh, we have the least number of meetings leading up. Previously, I think the Board of Ed used to have almost double the number of meetings that we have. So when you reduce the number of meetings, of course, the agenda is gonna be longer. The meetings are gonna run longer. There's a lot more data that's thrown at us. So that's not a sign of leadership. So I think we need somebody who has the experience and the aptitude to handle this. Maybe give the other person a chance. And I can be a vice president. I'm, I'm willing to consider that. Thank you. So I just wanna say that, that a lot of that was misinformation and all hiring has to be a board decision, not a board president or a, a superintendent. Um, for any major roles. So even including the two board members that um, are were on the board last year, uh, Mr. Forger and Mrs. Ghana had to vote for these roles as well because it's a whole board vote. So if you're going to call out misinformation, I think what you stated at the last reorg meeting about the bills and her missing the meetings, I would let Dipti speak for speak to it herself, to her record of how many months of bills did she review. I think there was a lot of misinformation circulated by a retired teacher in the community. And it is her right. Like Ms. Bradford has every right to vouch for a candidate of her choice. But there was no need to spread misinformation in an email about another board member. That's not how you work together. We all voted. You all voted on board goals. We were all going to collaborate together. But that's not the collaboration you see when you send an email to the entire community with misinformation. Thank you. I'd like to just make a very quick statement. So I started on the board last year. Um, just for the record, I've completed all the trainings that are required in my first year. Uh, there's some curiosity on the bill. So yes, I did probably 10 or 11 out of the last 12 months of last year, I did go and review the bills. In fact, I did that this week as well. Um, my measure of how effective a board member really is based not necessarily on the number of meetings, but it is what I would be able to contribute towards moving forward. And especially in 2024, the point about the 
you know, superintendent search, I think is an important one. Um, I also want to dispel the notion that somehow a board member who has a full-time job is not able to take a leadership position because I cannot imagine ever thinking that anybody who's retired or is a stay-at-home parent uh, doesn't work because raising a family, running a household is, it's a lot of work. So I would never imagine, you know, trying to make that insinuation. Um, just about myself, I will say I have been respectful with all of the board member interactions that I've had over the year. Um, I don't, I don't go and chastise people if they vote, you know, differently from me. All of us are independent. All of us are on the board. Um, I have been on the receiving end of some of that. I will admit, uh, and it's not fun. Um, on the flip side, I recognize that when we vote as a board. We don't go out and um, you know make comments in the public and social media because we are to operate as a unit, and it doesn't help um, us going out and after the board has made a decision, going and second guessing. So it's it's not something that's to anybody's benefit. Um, we've gone through the board goals process. You know we've talked about a lot of important aspects that we need to achieve as a board in 2024. Uh, and I would really like us to work together to get there. Um, I believe there's always good, healthy tension between the district and the board. And I think it's to everybody's benefit. Thank you. So I would just, I'd like to just say a few things as well. So there's been a little bit of misinformation talked about in terms of me having an issue uh, not supporting a budget. I supported the budget because that was hard work with the finance committee and it was a long process and it was the right thing to do because we worked very hard on the budget and we did what needed to be done. Uh, with regards to not being uh, thoughtful, I'm extremely thoughtful. I've been very thoughtful. In fact, I have made an attempt over this year to go in above and beyond to meet one-on-one -on -one with a number of board members. And that's not something that I needed to do, but that was something that I felt was in the best interest of the board, reaching out to the board members and finding out their concerns and their issues, and then I could take it back to the superintendent. And I've done that a lot. I also wanted to just reiterate my skills. Yes, experience is important. I think it's very important. I think being vice president, president, and being on charitable committees is important. You get to know how the board works, you get to understand relationships, and you get to know what needs to be done. Knowledge is also very important. This is my fifth year. I've been through the ranks. I've been chair of committees, I've been vice president, and then I've been president. Commitment. I think commitment is a huge part. It's an extreme part. And a number of board members acknowledged that commitment was important because I think having commitment to this board should be a priority, and I have done that. But also to mention, apart from all of those things, I looked up characteristics for a board president in New Jersey School Boards Association. And underneath them are communication skills. I have very good communication skills. I communicate well with the superintendent, with the business administrator, with my board members, and with the community. I have a huge understanding of the roles and relationships of the board. That's a characteristic for a board president. Balancing tasks and skills. I do that. I balance the tasks that need to be done to make sure this board is running and help work with the superintendent. And I do have good people skills. I work well with people. Uh, and I do have very, I have excellent interpersonal skills and consensus skills. I'm very good at when there's an issue, reaching out to board members, discussing things, finding out what their concerns are and trying to have a discussion and then taking it to the superintendent if it's something that needs to be done. These are all important aspects of a board president. And like um, uh, Ms. Stanley said, we all have leadership skills. We all have leadership skills. But I think it's extremely important in order to move this district forward. And let's face it, we're all here for one reason. We're here for the students. Number one priority to put this district first before all our personal agendas. And I think it's very important that we have somebody who's knowledgeable, has good communication skills, who's able to balance tasks, who has knowledge, commitment. And I think, I think I'm the person who can lead this 
district uh, forward as board president. Thank you. Seeing we have no more comments, we're going to take a vote from Mrs. Pennant. It's nominated by Mrs. Stanley. Uh, Mrs. Akiri. No. Mrs. Bradford? Yes. Dr. Forager? No. Mr. Hyman? Yes. Mrs. Jolly? No. Mrs. Connor? Mrs. Penna? Yes. And Mrs. Stanley? Yes. We have a 4 4 vote. Uh, motion fails. At this time, I'd like to take a vote for Mrs. Connor for president. Mrs. Akiri? Yes. Mrs. Bradford? No. Dr. Forager? Yes. Mr. Hyman? No. Mrs. Jolly? Yes. Mrs. Connor? Yes. Mrs. Penna? No. And Mrs. Stanley? No. Motion fails with a 4 4 tie. This time I'd like to make motion for president again. Do we have someone to nominate on the floor? I would like to nominate Angela Penna again. I would like to nominate Dipti Khanna. This time I'll take a vote for Mrs. Penna. Uh, Mrs. Akiri. No. Mrs. Bradford. Yes. Dr. Forager. No. Mr. Hyman. Yes. Mrs. Jolly. No. Mrs. Connor. Mrs. Penna. Yes. And Mrs. Stanley. Yes. Motion fails. Again, we have a 4-4 tie. We will take the vote for Mrs. Connor. Mrs. Akiri? Yes. Mrs. Bradford? No. Dr. Forger? Yes. Mr. Hyman? No. Mrs. Jolly? Yes. Mrs. Connor? Yes. Mrs. Penna? No. And Mrs. Stanley? No. Motion fails. We have a 4 4 tie. At this point, I don't think that we're going to have someone nominated for president. Uh, I would like to have a nomination for vice president unless you want to table it as you did at the last meeting. Um, I would suggest we table it. I would agree with tabling the. We, 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 we would. You, you make. Who's making the motion? You're making I'm making a motion to table it. Hey, Hannah. I would second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Do we have any nays? Nay. Eight. One. Oh. Motion passes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. At this time, in the event that we have no president or vice president is chosen, which is the case, then a temporary officer needs to be chosen to run this meeting only and only today. Do I have a nomination for someone to preside over this meeting in the absence of a president or vice president? So I would like to suggest that the business administrator runs the meeting. I, I think first we would want to do is um, 
have one of the board members. And if no one seems to offer that, then I would be another choice. Okay. And I believe one of the, the bylaw, I think 164 had stated so, of attempting to put someone, a board member in place first to run the meeting. And this is only for this meeting. That is correct. Yeah. And that's what, that's what I have stated on the agenda. So I'd like to nominate Tom Foreger for the role of the temporary officer to run this meeting. Okay, so you're nominating uh, Tom Foreger. Mr. Jeskovic, his last name is Dr. Foreger. I think we had- For Foreger? Foreger. Sorry about that. Okay, do we have any other nominations besides Dr. Forge, Forger? I'm, I'm saying that. Foreger, I'm sorry. I would like to nominate Mr. Hyman. Bradford. Do we have any other nominations for a presiding officer? Okay, seeing none, we will take a vote for Dr. For Forager. Forager, I'm sorry. Let me just. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Akiri? For Tom? Dr. Yes, that yeah. is correct. Yes. Mrs. Bradford? No. Dr. Forger? Forger? Uh, yes. <laughs> Mr. Hyman? No. Mrs. Jolly? Yes. Mrs. Connor? Yes. Mrs. Penna? No. And Mrs. Stanley? No. Motion fails. And we're having Mr. Hyman. Vote for Mr. Hyman. Mrs. Akiri? No. Mrs. Bradford? Yes. Dr. For uh, Forger? No. Mr. Hyman? Yes. Mrs. Jolly? Yes. Mrs. Connor? Yes. Mrs. Penna? Yes. And Mrs. Stanley? Yes. <laughs> so just so I'm clear, we had A's or Mrs. Bradford, Mr. Hyman, Mrs. Connor was a nay. I was a yes. It was a yes. 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 Okay. 16. 16. Dr. Mr. Carey and Mr. Forger. So 60. 62. Okay. I just wanted I just wanted to make sure. Motion passes. All right, Mr. Hyman, you're up. Make, make the motion. Sure. <laughs> No, the side joke was, as a presiding officer, I said, can he make the temperature in this room increase? Because it's literally freezing in here. And he's like, make a motion. Sorry. So, Master, just you can switch places. Do you, do you need me to, or do you want me to stay here? You should go. Okay. Um, Mr. Jessica, can I just clarify that this is just sure. for this meeting? That right? is just for this meeting. I've yeah. stated it in the agenda. It's on the way. So if we were well. on the same, if we we're on the same situation at the February eighth meeting, will we? Okay, so we'll go through it again. You know, at this, and I'm sorry, but at this juncture, I will be letting the county superintendent know uh, what is a pro what has transpired this evening, and I guess he will be making his notice to the board as the letter that he sent in last time. Yeah, can the temperature be like? Can you turn off the AC or something? It's really cold in here. I'll, I'll try to find someone. Mr. Thank Gary. you. Also, I'd just like to remind board members, please turn your mics on and, and the board attorney too. Turn your mic on and speak into it so people at home can hear. No, 
I just have a lot of things. Now what? <laughs> I'll, I'll take my water. Yeah. Okay. Do you need me to check the issue over here? Two that you have here. Very good. These were mine. Those are yours. Yeah. Okay. 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 Where do we start? The report of the student representatives. Can we do that uni unanimously? All right. Report of the student representatives. Hi, guys. Hey, how are you? Good. Hello, everyone. Our winter sports seasons have gone out to a hot and successful start as GL looks to match their impressive fall campaign with an even greater winter one. The GL hockey team has gotten off to an impressive 12 and one start as they look to win their third straight state title. The GL hockey athlete of the month is junior goalie, Scott Kappen. Coach Jensen said Scott has had a stellar start to the, to the year, posting a 941 save percentage with two shutouts. He has made some timely saves for us and is a big reason for our 12 and one record. The boys basketball team is seven and four and the boys basketball athlete of the month is senior Patrick McGrath. Coach Loeffler said, over the first month of the season, Patrick has averaged 17 points per game while guarding the other team's best player. Patrick has carried the team through the first half of the season by doing a little bit of everything on the court. He handles the ball, scores, rebounds, passes, and defends. The girls' basketball team is 6-5, and five, and the girls' basketball athlete of the month is senior Sarah Castrovinci, who leads the team in rebounds, blocks, and is second in points scored. The boys swimming team is three and two, and the girls swimming team is four and two. The swimmer of the month is senior girls captain Maddie Kinney. Coach Kloss said Maddie is a key member of the swim team, and between her great swimming and leadership in and out of the pool, she plays a huge role in our success. The boys fencing team is three and four, and the girls fencing team is zero oh and four. The fencing athlete of the month is senior Joe Leposki. Coach Wang said Joe has had an amazing season so far. With a 12-6 and six individual record in dual meets, Joe has been leading his talented foil squad to climb high towards their state title aspirations. This Sunday, Joe and his foil squad will fence at the Citrullo tournament against 50 other schools to vie for a state squad championship medal in the world's largest single-gendered high school sports competition. The wrestling team has an impressive 15-2 and two start to their season. The Wrestler Athlete of the Month is senior Christian Sabatino. Coach Liberato said, Christian is someone who has become a leader for wrestlers on and off the mat as he continues to motivate people around him to work harder and become successful. Over the last month, he came in first place at the 100 Central High School Individual Winter Tournament. Christian has gone 10-0 in his last 10 matches, including a huge win against a state qualifier from the 2022-23 wrestling season. Thank you. Good evening. It's hard to believe that we are almost finished with the second marking period and halfway through the school year. GL students are off to a very successful 2024, both academically and with club activities. Recently, a group of about 15 GL students traveled to Union County College to participate in a regional science Olympiad competition with over 20 schools. GL's team had a strong showing with finishes in the top third of all schools in attendance. On January 10th, the GL Club Council sponsored a mid-year club fair to encourage students to sign up for more activities within the school. Additionally, on January 11th, there was a winter concert in the GLHS Auditorium featuring the concert band, wind ensemble, and other performance groups. The Governor Livingston Robotics team came in first place at their meet in Milburn, and they are currently placed ninth in all of New Jersey. Looking ahead, the Interact Club will be writing Valentines for Veterans on January 25th. And on January 23rd at 7 p.m., an 8th grade scheduling presentation will be held in GL in order to inform incoming freshmen and their families about course selection at Governor Livingston. Thank you. Thanks, Olivia. Thanks, Jake. Any, any questions for student representatives? I just want to say I attended the Super Saturday and the Friday night, and it was just amazing to see the fencing team. And I watched the uh, middle school basketball, boys basketball. And I tell you, Mountainside has a 
fantastic player in number two, Mateo. And I look forward to in a few years where these two teams will come together and play here. So it was really a great uh, event uh, that Super Friday or Super Saturday and Friday too. So well done to our athletes. Libby, can you say again the date of the eighth grade uh, scheduling? Was that 23rd? Um, Yeah, that's January 23rd. Did you guys start making your schedules yet? Not yet. How is the process now that you guys are a little bit more used to it for these eighth graders that are coming in? Um, it's definitely not that bad, especially once you get the hang of it. And all of your recommendations are already in power school anyway, so it's more just picking what you want to do. Okay. Feels like a good segue to the superintendent's report, <laughs> maybe. Thank you, Mr. Heyman. Some of my thunder was stolen by our student reps, so that's okay. Um, from Dr. Janosko, um, this week the GL counselors have a meeting with the sophomore students and introducing them to the career interest inventories. Last night, Wednesday, over 150 students and parents came to GL for sophomore college and career night, hosted by the counseling department. Topics include Naviance, summer programs, post-secondary planning, and standardized testing. After that, immediately following that, Ms. Scott presented an introduction to the AP Capstone program. Currently, as stated by our fabulous student reps, it's the season for course selections for 8th through 11th grade students. Teacher recommend recommendations will be finalized in Power School tomorrow, January 19th. Next week, all 8th and 11th grade students will be able to review their teacher recommendations and select courses. It's already advertised, stated again, but I will state it once more. 8th uh, grade scheduling presentation for all students and parents. Um, will be presented by Mr. Nixon, the GL principal, and Dr. Janowsko um, at GL Tuesday, January 23rd at 7 p.m. Today, Dr. Seminero and myself had the pleasure of going down to CMS for a sixth, sixth grade literary, literary lunch um, held in the uh, media center, which was fantastic. 25 students, staff, and community members attended to discuss uh, the best-selling New York Times book, Thirst, all the students were engaged in their discussions about the book through the entire period. Um, they had short breaks for pizza and, and water, which was provided by our Ed Foundation. So thank you to Ed Foundation, a big shout out. I believe Dr. Seminero after that, um, when we were down there, started talking about maybe bringing it down to the fourth and fifth graders, or maybe having them come up to the middle school for a literary review. So a, lit, a lit lunch as they call them. So that's something where we started talking to Ed Foundation about, see if they would, um, sponsor food for that if we can we can arrange that to feel that works out and last but not least believe it or not it is board member recognition month so i have a little proclamation to to read take a sip of water it's long it's very long <clears throat> whereas the new jersey schools board association has declared 2024 january 2024 to be school board recognition month a time when all residents can acknowledge the contributions made by our local school board members. And whereas the Berkeley Heights Board of Education is one of 580 local school boards in New Jersey, which sets policies and oversees operations for public school districts. And whereas the Berkeley Heights Board of Education embraces the goal of high quality education for all New Jersey public school students. And whereas New Jersey's local school boards help determine the educational goals for approximately 1.4 million children in pre-kindergarten through 12th grade. And whereas New, Jersey, New Jersey's approximately 5,000 local school board members who receive no remuneration for their services act as advocates for public school students as they work with administrators, teachers, and parents for the betterment of public school education. And whereas... School boards strive to provide the resources necessary to meet the needs of all students, including those with special needs. And whereas boards of education provide accountability, accountability to the public, they communicate the needs of the school district to the public, and they convey the school administration the public's expectations for the schools. And whereas New Jersey can take pride in its schools, which rank among the nation's best and key achievement indicators, such as the National Assessment of Educational Prog Progress Scores and the Preparation for College through Advanced Placement offering, Offerings and SAT Assessments. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the, Bork that the Berkeley Heights Board of Education does hereby recognize the services of local school board members throughout New Jersey as we join community statewide in observing January 2024 as School Board Recognition Month, and be it further... Sorry about that resolved that the Berkeley Heights Board of Education urges all New Jersey citizens to work with their local boards of education and public school staff toward the advancement of our children's education. 
So shout out to all of you on a personal note, as someone who is a 17 year board member of my township's school board, I take great pride in, in being that school board. In my opinion, and this is my opinion as Anthony Giordano, there's no greater or more important elected official in this state than all of you. And I'm hopeful at some point we will galvanize and we will build consensus and we will continue to move the district forward as you all have. I believe in this short time I've been here, you are very good people. You have the best interest um, of our students and our community in your hearts. We just have to have a figure way to build consensus and move ourselves forward. And I look forward to working with all of you. So thank you for your volunteerism. Mr. Hyman, I think we need to vote on that. Sure, there, there's a suggestion that we should we should vote on that resolution. Yes. Yes, yes it's, it's a board, board resolution. It's a board resolution. I just want to put my two cents in at the end. Okay. Would we vote on it now or would we vote on a different point? In... Okay. Make that it. sounds good. So let's, uh, well, first of all, thank you. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll make a motion. All right. I was going to see if there's any, let's, we'll, we'll do that. And I was going to also see if there's any questions on, on Anthony's report, but hopefully we're, we're okay there. All right. Let's, let's, so we'll take a motion on voting on this resolution. Second. Who's the first? Yeah, I was, I was I looking for a motion. That wasn't me. Is there a motion? I will on that? You were the first with, with the motion. Yes. Okay. Can I have a second? second? I can second. Pam, second. And a vote, voice vote would be fine. All in favor? All in favor. There you go. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 We have any nays? Motion passes. Thank you. Okay. Board communications? Uh, I have, or sorry, committee and liaison reports. I skipped right past that. We have none yeah. since we had no committees that were Got appointed it. from the last board meeting. And no liaison reports either. Um, excuse me. I do have one before uh, the January 4th. On January 2nd, I attended the town hall meeting as the liaison and the town council welcome Margaret Illis and Bill Machado as newly elected members. And the town township, uh, township committee members were established. So that was before the January 4th meeting. I guess she just went. Thanks, Gail. Board communications? Communications that I have is a resignation letter from Dr. Varley. Had a correspondence regarding the reorganization meeting observance. I had a correspondence regarding the compromise for president and vice president. Had another correspondence for questions for board members regarding electronic devices. We also had another correspondence regarding the um, president and vice president and concerns, and also a correspondence regarding the chess club. Those are the correspondences that I have. Thanks, AJ. Uh, and back to you, report of the business administrator. Last week, we conducted uh, budget meeting interviews with all staff. Um, that has been concluded. Uh, we are reviewing the transportation consultant's report and looking at recommendations to implement new software, review the policy of hazardous routes, and subscription busing. We also met with the township and county officials to review road improvements that came from the recommendations from the tra transportation consultant's report. Uh, consultants to present at a future board meeting, and that'll be forth once we establish a president and vice president. That concludes my business administrator's report. Mr. Chairman, I have a question for sure. uh, Mr. Jiskovitz. Fire away. Mr. Jiskovitz, um, so the transportation uh, presentation that we were supposed to have, has that been rescheduled or we're what's going to, going to happen? We're going to rescheduled? rescheduled that once once we have a, a president and vice president in place to then move forward on when we want to conduct that um, presentation and at what meeting. Okay, thank you. I didn't want to have the gentleman sitting here for close to an hour and a half waiting for us to conclude what we were doing. So uh, in the best interest of, of him and his time, uh, that's why we decided to move it in a different uh, meeting. I understand. And will that go through the Finance Committee again? Is that how it will be determined? Uh, I guess that'll be determined once once we have elected uh, president and vice president uh, in place. Okay. And they can make that decision. Thank you. Sorry. Can I have a question on the transportation? Yeah. yeah. So the so we do have a report from this transportation consultant. And it's if it's finalized, I think I would request a copy of it. The presentation can wait. I don't um see the need for having a president and a vice president as 
I think some of my colleagues here have suggested, irrespective of if we have a president or vice president, we are going to proceed ahead with the CSA search um, and the superintendent search. That's business as usual. We need to do that to run this district. Similarly, subscription busing, courtesy busing has been an issue. And we've been promising to give numbers and disclose transparently what has happened. And last at the last budget meeting, I think in March and April, we were told we'll start working on this. And then one of the outcome was hiring a transportation consultant, which was sometime in summer. Now, this is January again. And if the report is available, I would like that report to be published on the district website. And similar to superintendent search, this is something that we need to be prepared for by the time in March when we have to approve the tentative budget. So if we are going to start budgeting for busing and something's going to change because of the report that has come from this transportation consultant, I think we, the board members, should be able to review this report, digest it. If we have any questions, go back to the consultant. The public, which is currently footing the bill for courtesy busing and which is not an equitable solution at all, and we don't know the numbers of how many courtesy busing students are there because that information has not come out from a finance committee or the president previously. So I think that re I request that this report be made public and available to board members and put on the district website. Mr. Chairman, can I speak? Please, sure. So, Mr. Kerry, you know, and you've been part of the coming to the audience, one of the reasons for doing the transportation consultant was to make sure that we do it properly. There was all sorts of misinformation last year about subscription busing and concerns about people getting busing that shouldn't. The Finance Committee made it a priority to make sure that we would do this properly. So we all determined that we would bring in the consultant was, was suggested. Uh, consultant was brought in to do a presentation. I think it's very important that the presentation is done to the community because I think the stakeholders need to see what our concerns are, what our issues are, and what needs to be determined. So I do think it's a priority that we have a presentation. Yeah. Present, I think we brought a consultant in to correct, to do the study of our roads. Yes. So I'm saying if the report is available, I want that report to be made available Mr. because... Kelly, you need to address the chairman when you need to speak. Yeah. I'm just... I am addressing, I didn't address anybody. I'm just saying to, I was basically responding to, I was, my questions were to the business administrator. You chose to answer them. So I'm basically looking at you, but if you want me to address, I, my questions were on the- I asked the chair if I could address yeah. your question. And then questions. I'm saying my questions originally were for business administrator. So if you could let the business administrator answer them, that would be great. My concern is, instead of being very ambiguous and saying there's a lot of misinformation around, the district has to provide these numbers on how many subscription busing students, how many courtesy busing students are there in our district. That is due by the department, that is basically mandated and we have to submit that report in October of every year. All I'm asking the board administrator is, I'm not even asking for the numbers. You are the one, I think, in response to my question to AJ, you responded that there's a lot of misinformation. The best way to dispel misinformation or any ambiguity is if we have a report, share it with the public. The reason Mr. Juskowitz said we cannot have a presentation is because we don't have a president or a vice president. And I said in my statement, this is business as usual. We need to be prepared by March budget session. So why are we delaying the presentation? And if you want to delay the presentation, that's your prerogative. I would like the report to be shared so we know what is in the report. And I would like the numbers for subscription busing and courtesy busing in the district for the current school year to be disclosed at the earliest. Is it possible, Mr. Jeskovich? Can, can you jump in, AJ? Maybe maybe just give us a sense of us, uh, where that report is and then rough timing. We haven't happened. finalized the report. We're meeting back with the consultants again. So we go over some of the items that you've just discussed and finalize them. So we can prepare to include the numbers that we confirm with him and discuss with him to include in our budget. Do you, to size question, do you envision, so let's let's say we, we figure out the president, vice president in the next, I'll make it up two to three weeks, hypothetically, maybe that's wishful thinking. 
<clears throat> at that point, we'll proceed with trying to get the presentation scheduled. Correct. Again, as I said, I didn't want to have him here for an hour and a half totally utilizing sense. his time. Yeah. And I think all we would all agree to that at this point. So that was why he wasn't put on here tonight. And hopefully that when we do have somebody in place, we have a clear vision of what they want to do when they want to do it. And it's and it's amongst all the board members. I'm sure that's going to be asked when they would want to have it done. Go to Tifty. Yeah, thanks. Um, so yes, last December, the Finance Committee did um, get a preliminary report, I want to say, because it looks like they're still kind of, you know, finishing it off. If I may make a suggestion and see how it, you know, works for you, uh, if we can get even the prelim uh, report copy for us to even understand, it's a lot of information that was provided that in that meeting. So my thought is, if the board can get a copy of the preliminary report, uh, let's you know, think positive, think optimistic that in a couple of weeks we will get to a place where we have a you know president in place. Uh, it will help everybody digest the information and come prepared with questions because I I'm just speaking from my experience being on the finance committee. It was uh, it was good information. It was a lot to take in, and then I had some follow ups in my mind after the meeting. So that would be my recommendation: is let's take a look at let's get the information to the to the board members. Let's digest it, and then we can come prepared. And and I, I want to bring the information to you that's correct, and that's why we want to speak with the consultant again next week to finalize those numbers and, and finalize our discussion with questions that we had for him. One quick follow-up is, can we get the numbers that were submitted to the state for subscription and current courtesy busing for this year? Can we get that report to be put up on the district website? This is the DRTRS report that goes to the Department of Ed. So the state doesn't um, put those two separately. They don't have a separate thing for courtesy busing and a separate thing for required busing. They call it courtesy busing. It's all one together. I think the state uh, DRTRS report is available on the Department of Ed website. If this is some, this is some information that you were given previously based on some ed some data that we are not aware of because I have seen other districts. I've seen our district. If they club them, I would like the board administrator or the district to explain to us why these numbers are clubbed. I wasn't aware of this. This is the first time I'm hearing about it. So I would like AJ to. So I don't want to continue on because we do need to get back to our agenda. But um, right when this came up last year and we had given numbers and people were very upset that the numbers were not the same as the states, it's because the state does not have something called courtesy busing like we call courtesy busing, right? We call it courtesy busing because we give it to people, right? The state, their courtesy busing is required busing. So for us, our numbers are put together for that compared to the state. I was going to say, AJ, any other, then I'll go to Tom. Anything else you want to add to that? You're good. Okay, Tom. No, I, I what she said, what uh, the general lady uh, suggested, the state actually does publish courtesy busing. That's everybody that um, <laughs> is not required to be bust. And I think they also break out subscription busing, but I can't remember for sure. Uh, but I think the way to move forward here is actually to do what's called a special order on the agenda. We set a specific time. And just invite the consultant to come in and give their presentation. They don't have to sit here through, you know, uh, election of president, vice president, whatever. We just set a time. When that time comes, then we take that up as a special order. The rest of the stuff here is general business, doesn't have specific time. Just follow Robert's rules. We can schedule them in. I, th I think you said you were going to meet uh, within a week or so. Why don't we say aim for the next meeting? And just have them come in. Hey, Jay, do you, any comments on timing uh, of that? Do you do you are we at a place where you can we can look to pick a date and a specific time? Like right now, on our next meeting, we're speaking about the superintendent search. Yeah. That's a special meeting. Yeah. If there needs to be anything added to it, then we would need to advertise it as such. Got it. So maybe we think of the ensuing meeting, which I think is two weeks after that, something like that. It's a possibility. Unfortunately, um, yeah. February 26th is, is the meeting after that. 
I thought that was the meeting the week after. So if we have one February 8th, would it be seven days later, the 15th? Oh, I thought um, I would Mr. Suggest, Hyman was suggesting the following. I, I, was, I was asking if the so next, the the next scheduled meeting. meeting after the 2-8 meeting yeah. is a possibility. I don't know that's, yeah. Is that what you were thinking too, Tom? Yeah. I would, I'm sorry, I, I would suggest. I'm, I'm just, sorry. It is February 25th. 26, yes. Yeah. It's a little late, but uh, let's. I'm going to keep this moving along. I am concerned. Uh, I mean, we need to make some decisions about courtesy busing, and I don't want it to be a kind of, you know, we do nothing because you ran out of time. We have to. We should kind of keep this moving along. Yeah. I mean, can we maybe endeavor to to have you confirm that AJ? If that's if there's some reason after the conversation you guys plan to have next week, if that's not possible. Let us know, but otherwise, can we endeavor to put it on for two twenty six? And I, I like the idea of a specific time. If that's um, so, if this that's, oh. Go ahead, yeah. So my thinking is February twenty sixth is very close to March. By when our tentative budget is almost being finalized. So if we are going to budget a line item for transportation, we need this report. And the reasons being given for not even sharing the preliminary report is something needs to be finalized and it's next week, that's last week of January. So if February 8th is a special meeting and it has superintendent search, like Dr. Foraker suggested, we can have a special order, let the, let the transportation guy in, come in, pick a time, maybe he can go first, give us a presentation, we get the report because AJ is meeting with him next week, we get time. It's it's a complex report and it's a complex decision for our district to make. So I would like it to be added as an agenda item for February 8th. If you'd like me to move a motion, I'm more than willing to do that. So the, 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 is the, so the question is, does the board have consensus on that? And if so, are you saying we'd need to advertise as such as part of the agenda? For yes, AJ would have to advertise that uh, as soon as possible, that, that the board will also be discussing the superintendent search and going over the um, the transportation report as well. That's but, correct. Whenever whenever we have a special meeting, whatever is going to be said or conducted during that meeting, it has to be advertised as such. So originally we have this down as a superintendent search. If we need to advertise it to add that to it, I would need to do that. That's all I need. Okay. Anyone anyone opposed to that timing wise? Two eight. Two eight meeting. Adding as the two eight meeting. Go ahead, Tipti. So the only, I, I guess we are assuming that the consultant is available and saying. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. We're assuming a lot of things, actually. A lot of things. Yeah. But yeah, so yeah. I, I, I suppose. We're going to find out before we, that. <laughs> before we advertise it. That's all. So if then. <laughs> okay. Are we good? So I think the board is in agreement okay. if, if the consultant's available. Okay. So then AJ tomorrow will reach out to him, see if he's available February 8th, and we'll send a notification to the board that they are, and then we'll AJ re advertise it. Does it have to say we're going to take action at the meeting? Anytime I have a board agenda, the word may take action is always used. Whether or not we do it, it's there. Okay. As long as it doesn't say we are not taking action. Okay, uh, moving on, question mark? Yes, good, okay, moving on. Uh, comments from the public on agenda items? I'm, I'm gonna do my best Angela voice or Mike voice or Doug voice. Okay, are we releasing this? I, this, I, this, they, should they should stay. I say it every time, yeah. Gonna invoke some power and make them stay the whole time. Regarding the air conditioning, yeah, I feel like it's getting hotter, Mister. Is it? I texted Mister. Romano, and he had one of the uh, custodians come up and move the uh, lever over for, to bring the heat. From what he explained to me, was there's outside air being pulled in. When it hit, hits a certain temperature, it will it will start to heat up. I feel like I'm getting a little hotter, but that's just me. I run hot. I'll get back to you. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. But he, they did. The custodian came in and then moved it over. So I can retext him again. I'm come back up. All right, I'll keep moving. Uh, during this portion of the meeting, district residents and staff are invited to address the Board of Education on agenda action items only. The board requested individuals state their name and town of residence or school of attendance. For the record, all comments should be directed to the board president uh, or the interim guy. And depending upon the nature and complexity of the question, it may or may not be answered during the meeting by the administration. 
If so, the response would occur after this public portion of the meeting has concluded. Although the board may not respond to all items raised during the public forum, all public comments will be considered. The board asks that members of the public be courteous and mindful of the rights of other individuals when speaking. Specifically, comments regarding personnel matters are discouraged and cannot be responded to by the board. Students and employees have specific legal rights afforded by the laws of New Jersey. The board bears no responsibility, nor will it be liable for any comments made by members of the public. Please note that if any member of the public becomes disruptive during the meeting, the board president may terminate the participant's statement. Continued disruptions may result in removal from or adjournment of the meeting. Each speaker statement will be limited to three minutes in duration. Do we have any comments on agenda items only? I have no shot clock, but if you want, I can do it off my phone. I, right. I can squeeze the fourth one. That I order. Yeah, but <laughs> there you go. You get the shot clock. Uh, I would. I really wasn't going to. To much of your surprise, I really wasn't going to. Sorry, say. You, state your name. In oh, John McGuire's Berkeley Heights. I'm so Thank sorry. You. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so I just the only thing I'm going to say is Jordan, you are doing a fantastic job. In the first, I want to be like, thirty so, seconds. Yeah. I want to be really clear. <laughs> I want to be really clear about what's different here. But Dr. Giordano, you did a great job in acknowledging every board member is here for the right reasons. And Jordan, your your approach, respect, and deference, even though I know you may not agree with what's going on here, was really impressive. That was really refreshing to see. I want to thank you for showing it and modeling it. Thanks, man. Any other comments, questions from the public? Agenda items only? State your name and address. Hi, my name is Chris Riley, One Deer Path Lane, Berkeley Heights. Um, I'm trying to find the words. Uh, very disappointing that um, we've gone to round two without selecting a president and a vice president. Um, I think you all know it's not a great look for our town. I'm worried about our reputation beyond our borders. I know you also think of yourselves as leaders. Now, it's been a while since I checked the leadership manual, but uh, one of the key qualities of a leader is the ability to collaborate and to consensus build. And that is clearly not happening with this board. So I beseech Ms. Kana and Ms. Penna to get together, the two of you, and have a conversation with one another, since you both seem to have equal support, and figure out how you can make this work and what your respective roles would be. You can have a conversation with one another. The two of you alone is not a quorum. You can absolutely do that for the district. As far as I'm concerned, I think experience does matter a great deal. And I would like to see you in a VP role, learn the ropes for a year. And then if you wanna be president next year, you know, you can work that out with the board. I would also leave the board with um, one other comment. And that is, I hear a lot about the need for change. Well, when I think about change, I think about voters. And um, Ms. Penna was the top voter vote getter in 2019 in a highly competitive race. And again, in 2022, the top vote getter in a another extremely competitive race. I think there were six or seven or eight, eight people running and that was post full day kindergarten implementation, redistricting and post COVID, top, top vote getter. And with no disrespect to Ms. Jolly and Ms. Akiri, who've been very vocal, you did not run in a competitive race. You walked onto this board and um, that's disappointing for other reasons that there weren't people in the community who felt either inspired or motivated to run for public office. But I, again, when it comes to mandates for change, I think I look to the votes, and when I look to the votes, um, at least in 2022, Miss um, Penna was the top vote, vote getter. I'll say that again. 
And there's still a great deal of support for Ms. Penna in this community. But that all said, I do think Ms. Kana and Mrs. Penna, you should talk to each other and try to figure out a way to work this out. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Hi, uh, Debbie Varnerin, 20 Wardle Ave. Excuse my voice. I'm just getting over being sick. Um, I've lived in this town for 17 years now, and this is the first Board of Education meeting that I'm ever attending. And it is because I am going to use some of the exact same words that Chris did. I'm disappointed in every single one of you. And for any of you to consider yourselves leaders, you're fooling yourselves. You're embarrassing our town and you are making it extremely difficult for us to get any qualified superintendent. I was going to suggest the same thing that Chris suggested. Dipti, I know you personally. Angela, I know you personally. I probably know Dipti more than I know you, Angela. You are both wonderful people. You really are. You're always smiling. You're always happy. You're always a delight to talk to. There's no reason why you two cannot sit down and talk and work this out. There isn't. I know I'm up for time. I should get a little bit of, uh, you know, I'm very stuffy, so I should get an additional 30 you're, seconds. You're okay. You're good. Um, another thing that I want to say is just smile, people. I mean, you all look like you're like sitting on thorns. It takes more muscles to frown than it does to smile. Smile, look like you're here for something good. You're all saying that you want to be here, but you look like this is the worst effing thing you've ever done in your life. Smile and make it seem like you want to be here. Gosh. I'm going to touch on the, the vote because um, I do follow the voting numbers and statistics for quite some time now. Uh, back in 2019, there were five people, I think, that, that ran. Angela Penna was position number five, and she got the most votes. That's unheard of. Everybody knows that they do something called, you know, stacking the ballot that I think some of us are familiar with, where you just have a bunch of people throw their names in the hat, and then whoever doesn't get a good ballot position, they fall off like what we've been seeing here the last couple of years. Um, Angela Penna didn't fall off. She got the most votes. And the reason why people stack the vote that stack the ballot like that is because it's known that typically it's position one, two, or three that wins the board of election because people just go down the the line. It says pick three, one, two, three. Angela was position number five. And she, okay, I get an additional 30 seconds. Well, you get 30 seconds. If, I've uh, never been here before. So this is making up bonus. for 17 yeah, it's, years. It's first time. Long okay. Time. Go ahead. In, that was in 2019. In 2022, there was eight people who ran. Angela was position number two. And again, she got the most votes. So to say that people want change, people don't. Don't talk for the public. The public talks at the polls. And we voted to reelect Angela when she was being attacked daily daily, all the horrific stuff that was going around, the public still chose to ignore that and, and vote her back in. There's two other things. I'm going to be quick and short. Okay. Seat assignments. It's like who's against who. I would highly suggest you guys splitting up. Pamela, uh, Natasha, Gail, Dipti, don't, it's like you guys are purposely situated to be against each other. Mix yourself up. The other thing that I'm going to suggest, and I am so sorry for going over time, is get to know each other. I, 
worked for over 25 years for a nonprofit organization, and I took a lot of leadership roles. And um, it wasn't fun. It was IT. And being a woman that was back-end infrastructure leader in IT, I was like the rarity. So I had to go in with a bunch of men. And one of the things um, that an executive coach told us to do was when there's friction and when you're not getting along with somebody, go and have coffee with them. Go and have lunch with them and get to know them on a personal level because you'll realize that you're not that different. You're not that far apart and try to find something else that you guys can get along with. Thank you for the extra time. I'm Great sorry. No, How much extra did I go over? I'll give it about a minute. That's okay. Sorry. The, the, the new guy is obviously not doing his job well. So you, you, but thank you. It's okay. It's limited appearance anyway. Oh, Aaron Jolly, 60 Orion Road, Berkeley Heights. Hey, Aaron. Short for me. I'm sorry. Uh, I just, uh, I know the uh, resignation of Miss Lydia Kang is on the agenda. Uh, I just want to speak on a personal note, um, speaking for me and on behalf of my sister as well and my entire family. Miss um, Kang uh, was a, it's a huge loss to this district. Uh, I'm not completely aware of the reasons she resigned, um, but I had her uh, in eighth grade for an algebra one course. Uh, my sister had her in seventh and eighth grade, and now she's here at the high school. Um, neither of us have her class. But, you know, I go in and visit her every day and talk to her. She has three of my Christmas cards now. Um, so, you know, there's a designated one for her every year. Um, she was, uh, she's a great teacher. And uh, like I said, I don't know the reason she's resigning, um, but I want to uh, take the time to, on behalf of me and my entire family, thank her uh, for her time in this district uh, and hope that, you know, together you guys can vote on, you know, a, you know, proper replacement and someone who has the correct qualifications uh, to teach the, uh, you know, the AP course that she teaches uh, along with uh, the financial literacy and uh, other courses that she teaches. So, uh, yeah, thank you, Ms. Kang. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Debbie Torero. I'm at 170 Lenape Lane. I happen to actually be the uh, BHPTO president. And first of all, I want to acknowledge Ms. Sakari, Ms. Jolly, welcome to the Board of Education. However th anything sorts out, I really hope for the betterment of the district that you guys can all get along. Over the course of the last two weeks, I've received a number of phone calls of families with children and not children in the district and they were gravely concerned about what's going on. And so I'm speaking on behalf of them. I am completely neutral, whether it's Angela Penna or Dipti Khanna in terms of who takes over the presidency and vice president. But I would say and encourage you all, much like the other people have spoken about, to try to talk to each other and work with each other because you are here to actually support our community. I am very concerned that being that the new superintendent is gonna be hired, that we are gonna have a difficult time trying to hire somebody. And with all the noise and the fighting that's going on, it's gonna be very difficult to attract good talent. So I encourage you all to really work together to try to make things better in this community. Jordan, I think you've done a wonderful job. I haven't had an opportunity to meet with you, but you've done a wonderful job so far. So thank you everyone, good luck, and hopefully we can have a better year, okay? Thank you. The run for office after this. Any other public comments, agenda items only? All right, keep it moving. Uh, we're gonna uh, we're, we'll cl close, the, close the public session, is that what you're saying? Okay. Closing public at 844. Uh, we're gonna move to minutes now. Uh, can I have a motion for resolution A, all board members? It's approval of board minutes, uh, approval of meeting minutes rather for December 14, uh, regular and exec. And this is also for January 4, regular session. Mr. Chairman, so I, I wanna make a motion to amend 
the minutes for the reorg meeting from 4th of uh, January 2024. And if it's okay, I can, Please. you know, okay. So uh, the proposed amendment is um, to reflect the accurate eyes and knees for roll call number five and roll call number six as listed in the minutes currently. And it would essentially exactly change the ones that are listed as eyes were nays and the other way around both for roll call number five and roll call number six. Basically saying they're inverted. <laughs> Does she need a second? Do we have you do need a do second on that motion. I'll, I'll second that. Okay, so we've got a motion to basically correct by inverting the eyes and the nays. So I also Comments, need questions. to ask for an amendment. So I don't know if I can add on to that amendment or if I need to do a separate amendment. No, you have to do a separate amendment. Okay. So we'll we, do this, we vote on it, take a second amendment. To dispose of this amendment, then you can do I also yours. think we needed to vote to move the motion first. Yes, we should have. Yeah. So, Angela, you want to move the motion? I'll a suggestion, it. and this is just my suggestion. Yeah. Please don't take off my head. When we're when we're asking those questions, I would refer them to to the board attorney as opposed to us just saying that we don't need to need to. I think just my experience yeah. is the one that's going to guide us, so we don't trip up ourselves. And just give us clarification. It's all about the process of moving this meeting forward in a deliberate manner. So, making the motion the way Dr. Forger recommended is fine. Um, and as long as it's recorded in the in the record, and as long as everyone has the opportunity to be heard and to deliberate, and that's what's most important. So um, I join in with what Dr. Forger's recommendation. Okay, so Angela, do you want to move the minutes and I'll second? Yeah, so moved. And then we'll take the amendment. Okay, so now we'll go to the amendment. Yes. Okay. Amendment was already moved. Oh, it was already so, And we have a second on it already. Okay, so I've got the second. Any discussion on the amendment or questions? Yes, sir. Can we do roll call on that amendment? Voice vote will, will suffice? Voice vote would suffice. Okay. Uh, all in favor of that as amended? Aye. 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 Do we any have nays? any nays? Okay. Motion passes. We have a, an additional amendment, Pam? Yeah, so unfortunately, I was looking at it again um, when it got resent, and um, it looks like the it says move motions. Um, I'm just trying to find it. M uh, A through M, and it's A through N. It's even listed like N is the last one, so it says resolution A through M. That's in Mary. That, that's correct because what happened at the reorg meeting? Yeah. K. Happened to not be in there. Okay. And that moved everything down. So that's why it's now A to M. And after I had a member of the board point out to me that that was missing, that I was then able to get the proper resolution on for this okay. go around under the business section. But uh, it still has an end listed on the Jan 4th. Because I remember when I moved it, it was A through N during the meeting. We were definitely missing it during the meeting, that letter. No, we, no, we did K. it. We did N in the meeting because I called uh, when I when I tried to call it or bring it back. The original. So on the Jan 4th, when you go down, it's A, B, C, and it goes all the way down, and N is on the last one. Yeah. And even in the, the one sent out today. So it should be A through N. So, so my amendment would be to add A through N. Also in here, um, it doesn't have the votes where the first time around when we moved the motion, it was voted down. And then we, we moved to move the resolution again. That part is missing. Is that just, should we add that in? Uh, that is a good question. I'm I'm trying to reiterate what, yeah. you know. Um, so at last meeting, right, it got voted down. It failed four votes. And then I asked to move it again. And I got a second. And then we re-voted. So the vote on here is the re-vote. Is it missing or not there? It's not there. The original vote's not there. The original, vote. original vote's not there. The first, the first four, four. The first vote. failed vote. Is the, not the there. first four four vote, Anthony. It, it failed four four, 
And then there's a discussion amongst the board that board members could vote individual resolutions. And so we re-voted and that's how it went through again. Um, I'll move to amend it and then we can add it in later. There, there's a, there's a question to if we want to consider do we want to table these minutes have, have them amend it just just the rear okay. minutes so, just the reorg minutes the reorg minutes for yeah. them to be revised and reposted for the next meeting okay. a so, clean copy there'll be no confusion thank you so it, so I'll, I'll move to table um the minutes for january 4th the reorg agenda the second on that or just want to do a, a void of it, we a, need a second a, second second okay Anyone, all in favor of that, or anyone opposed? Wait, wait, wait. The, the motion, uh, just state the motion. The motion is to table, table January fourth. Correct. The reorg uh, minutes. But wait a minute. Did we did we approve uh, exact for, for we, December fourteen and regular? We, for we did not. We did not yet. No. Not yet. So we're still working on amendments. Uh, Correct. So now there's been a there's been a motion to basically table ta table the, just the reorg Jan four. Yeah. See. Okay. So that they can be put back for the Fab 8 meeting with the amendment that already went through and the additional changes that were just discussed. Okay. So let's have a vote on the table. I, we're just going to do all in favor of tabling it. Yeah, yeah. Yes, then we'll vote on the... And then we'll minutes. vote on the yes. other ones. So all in favor, was that, was that a yes? Aye. 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 Okay, any nays? Okay, so we're tabling that. Now, can we move to a vote on the minutes for December 14th, exec and regular? So we had Mrs. Penna that made the motion, and we had a second by Mrs. Stanley. Yeah. Correct. Mrs. Penna. Yes. Mrs. Stanley. Yes. Mrs. Akiri. Um, I'll abstain. December, I wasn't here, so. Mrs. Bradford. Yes. Dr. Forager. Yes. For Eger. I'm sorry. Forager. 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 No. Yes. Mr. Hyman. Yes. Mrs. Jolly. I'll abstain since I wasn't on the board at the time. Mrs. Connor. Yes. Motion passes. Okay. Amend appointments. Next item resolution A for all board members. Can I have a motion? I second. second it. Second. Got that, AJ? Yes. Okay. Uh, roll call. Mrs. Stanley. Yes. Mrs. Penna. Yes. Mrs. Akiri. Yes. Mrs. Bradford. Yes. Dr. Four Iger. Gur. 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 Yes. We'll get there. I'm sorry. Do you get me? I'm a yes too, but I didn't hear. Oh, oh, sorry. We're waiting on Tom. What? He's asking you for. Waiting you on. Asking for your vote. Amend annual appointment. Oh, I, I thought I said yes. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Hyman. Yes. Mrs. Jolly. Yes. Ms. Connor. Yes. Motion passes. Okay, we're moving to administration. This is items A through F as in Frank. All board members, can I have a motion? So moved. Bradford. Second. Second. Angela, questions, comments? Uh, I'm an eye. Sorry. So um, I have a question on the approved professional development. I think we see some of the B administrators on there, and there are some amounts mentioned in the attachments. Uh, if the board administrator can tell me if these if these amounts match yeah. with their contracts, like are these allowed and not amount on their contracts? Are we referring to E? A, approved uh, professional development. Item A. Item A. Uh, attachment A too. Yeah. I think I need to. I need to open. Let me 
the, my computer to check on the attachments. Yeah, it's in the attachments. It's some of the administrators have like seventeen hundred dollars mentioned on them. Do you have any a copy of the attachments by any chance? I don't know. Um, since that's professional development, uh, Dr. Giordano, would you have a better idea about that? Sure, and I'll, I'll get more specific, uh, Ms. Acri, with you tomorrow, but anything that's on there is contractually um, for the staff members, so any any, any monetary bond numbers they put in is, is per their, either the BHEA or the BHAA contract, but I, yeah. I'll double check that for you. If you have specific ones, you want to let me know? Uh, yeah, tomorrow? I did uh, send an email, I think, oh, um, maybe about, um, I think I have one for Curtis, is the amount as per the contract, because yeah, I don't. I, I, have, I, I, I didn't get. The, I. I mean, I. I didn't read it. I didn't. I, I got. I opened it. I didn't read it. I'm sorry. I apologize. Um, I will find that out for you tomorrow. But anything that's on there, um, is contractually is, is, by, yeah. is part of their contract, yes, right? Okay. And I, and I will forward to the full board tomorrow. Uh, the BHAA contract. Thank you. Um, because they don't have individual contracts and the BHEA contract as well. Because that would be great. Yeah. Can I? Sorry, you're good. I, Other questions? Are you okay? All right, Tom. No, I I did a little check on my own, and uh, as far as I can tell, they were all within the limits. But yes. I'll defer to your expertise. <laughs> Other questions, to... Tom? Um, no, not not on that. Okay. I just want to. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. Um, I just wanted to talk about the school calendar. Um, I know for a few years some of us have fought to add other um holidays in and I know it's really hard and I know we have a teacher contract so we have to work with them um, sometimes people think we can take days off easily but we can't because we do have this teacher contract so sometimes the days are set um, by that contract but I do want to try to add more holidays um, like Diwali and um, Lunar New Year and I know that other districts around us have already started doing this and I do think we really really need to put this um, as a priority in the coming future that we reflect um, the student population and that they can spend time with their family. Um, so I know we weren't able to do it this year, but I hope um, that by 2025, 2026, we can look into this so that we can truly um, reflect our um, our students. Thanks, Pam. And I'll speak selfishly to say that I'm, I'm glad we're aligned with Mountainside for spring break for what it's worth. <laughs> I think there was a chance that that was not gonna happen, but hopefully that was never really a chance that that was gonna happen, so. I'm glad uh, we're there on the calendar. Other questions? One last question. Is the calendar in um, sync with, I know I saw that we were in sync with Mountainside, but are we in sync with the UCVTS? Any idea? Can you speak to that, Anthony? Sure. So UCVTS will not um, publish calendar. I can. UCVTS will wait. You know, most county. districts within the county have published their calendars and okay. only then. But I can say, you know, over the past, in my experience over the last three years, their break um, is usually it starts Good Friday and it goes the week after. So if that is still the case, I think we should be in sync. Okay, that's great. We're not fully synced with Mountside for, for what it's worth, but at least with spring break we are. I mean, the, the starting dates are not synced, but they weren't this, this year either. It, it is what it is. Uh, any other uh, comments, questions on uh, A through F? Now we can go to go to roll call. Ms. Bradford. Yes, to all. Ms. Penna. Yes. Ms. Akiri. I'm a yes to everything, or A to F, but on the B, the Hib report, it's a no to two numbers. Should I give them to you? So you're going to um, vote no on two of the items on the HIB report. Okay, which which numbers? Um, it's two five three nine seven zero. Two five nine three. No, no, two five three nine seven zero underscore G L H. Five zero. Okay. No. Two five three nine seven zero. Okay. Underscore G L H, and the other one is two five five. 583. And that, what underscore, uh, what number was that again? That's what agenda. Two triple five eighty three. No, no, so, I'm saying what, what resol uh, resolution number was that? In administration B, I'm approving. 
under administration, the approved report of superintendent was okay. B. B. Okay. Yeah. In B, no to two five three nine seven zero two five 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 eight three. Yes. Okay. Okay, Dr. To hold on. For eager. For eager, yes. For eager. Gur, gur, gur. Gur. I don't know what Orager. it is. I got this mental block. I'm sorry. All right. Uh, yes to A, C, D, E, and F. And no to 253-970 under bar GLH in B. And 255-583 under bar CMS. In B and rep and yes to the rest of B. Thank you, Mr. Hyman. Yes to all. Miss Jolly. Yes to all. Mrs. Connor. Mrs. Stanley. Yes. Motion passes. Okay, moving to education. This is uh, items A through C. All board members. I have a motion. I move I move A through C in education. I'll second that. Comments, questions? Under C, the cybersecurity curriculum, can I request that we got an email from Mr. Giordano. Can we document in the minutes that this resolution is being reintroduced as the curriculum guide was not approved previously? I would have liked... Uh, Previously, I think many moons ago when we had Donna Felizola, she would, when, when an agenda item like this was put on, the rationale was put on. So this cybersecurity curriculum was already approved previously. I think it's back on because it missed, it was a, the curriculum guide was missing. It was something else. I think another form was put in its place. So if a rationale is put on the agenda, it's more clear to the public. If I'm willing to, I'm I'm voting yes on all this, but I want this documented in the minutes specifically. I don't know if I'd have to make a motion for that. We have to make a motion for that? I, I would, you, you shouldn't have to, no. Yeah. Well, as long as you took it down and we'll record it in the minutes, that will satisfy the security. I, 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 I no, I, I'm I'm going to say it right here. It's it's in an email from Mr. Giordano on the reason for putting this on the agenda. I want specifically that reason mentioned in the documents. Basically, this was voted previously, but it's back on the agenda because we did the previous board did not vote on the curriculum guide. Right. So so just to, just to clarify too, Mr. Kerry, <clears throat> this was the course approval happened in December of 2022. Excuse me. It should have been put on, and uh, um, which I thought was on uh, the tenth of, of of January, twenty twenty three. It was never approved. Um, when it came to my attention, that was never approved. Um, we put it on for the December board meeting. What I gave the board to approve was the original course approval, never the guide. So that was my mistake. So let the record stand. What Mr. Curie is saying is that was my mistake, and and so we're putting the guide on the previous guide on now to be approved. And I, I would need just the rationale for this curriculum to be included in with the attachment. Is that what we're saying as, as well? Yeah. Okay. Which is already documented in, in that email, yeah. which we have. Yeah. 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 Other comments, questions on A, B, or C? I'm just going to say that the band is going to a parade in this city, hopefully. At least that's their goal. I don't know if you saw it on the um, attachments. Um, but that is really exciting. So hopefully um, they can get their all their people together and all their stuff ready, because I think that's pretty exciting for our district. All right. Uh, can we yeah. go to roll call? Uh, oh, oh, just sorry. and thank you to Mr. Go. Sullivan, who's here tonight, for everything that he does with our bands. It's awesome. And to have them portrayed nationally on TV is going to be great at the St. Patrick's Day. And I'll second that. All right, roll call. Dr. Forager. For well, that, that, that's interesting. I get to go first. Yes to all. Mr. Kiri. Yes to all. 
Ms. Bradford? Yes to all. Mr. Hyman? Yes to all. Ms. Jolly? Yes to all. Ms. Connor? Ms. Penna? Yes. Ms. Stanley? Yes. Motion passes. Moving to personnel. This is uh, items A through R for all board members and then S through AE for Berkeley Heights only. I have a motion. So moved. Second. Second. Comments, questions? Who was it? Who was the second? Uh, it, was, it was Mrs. Jolly, second. 50. No, I would like to. Okay. We'll go to Tipti and then we'll go Angela. I, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to uh, amend uh, Personnel J, resignation of staff to move the uh, final date for Melissa Barley to April 18th. I'll second that. Can you repeat that? Your the the effective date on that is currently June 30th. I I move to amend it to say the final date will be April 18th. Um, I, I have to defer to our attorney on that. I'm not sure if with a resignation date that was given by an employee to, to do so under contract. You're accepting a resignation that was submitted with an effective date in the resignation. If the board wanted to take action to terminate her before, that would be a separate motion. I mean, you could make the motion, I presume, and and perhaps it would not. I mean, you're not if you if there's a determination to terminate Dr. Varley's contract, that's a a deliberative decision that would be made. You you don't do it by changing what has been stated as an effective date. You would either accept her resignation as of June thirtieth or not accept her resignation. You don't change the contents of her letter. So if I may speak, I think her. we haven't seen the resignation letter, even though the resignation is on option. Um, I don't know if any other board members have seen it. I have asked for it. I have not seen the resignation letter. The public statement that was released by Dr. Warley during holidays in December said that it it is June 30th or it could be sooner based on the... I think, I, I don't re remember the exact words, but basically she's in discussions on something. So it was a little ambiguous. And I know this role is very critical for our district. So I haven't seen the resignation letter. What does it, if it, if it mirrors the public statement that Dr. Worley released, it basically said, as of now it's June 30th, but I'm in discussion on certain things and it can be sooner. So I looked at her contract it says that she gets 60 days notice. So based on the amended contract from September, 2023, I saw 60. So if it's not correct, I would like, so all I'm saying is it's a very critical role and it's a very transitionary year for us. So I want us to be proactive, not reactive. I don't want that ambiguity from an employee saying I can leave if I find something else. So I think we are we are basically amending it to be April 18th. I don't think that's permissible. I think you either pass the resolution or don't pass the resolution. I also don't think you talk about personnel issues in public pertaining to a superintendent who you may be very dissatisfied with, but you don't discuss that in public when the superintendent's not here. If there's not evidence that a resignation was submitted effective uh, June 30, 2024, then that's a reason not to pass the resolution perhaps this evening and or to table the resolution. But again, if the decision is made to terminate somebody, that's an entirely different deliberative process to be taken by the board in a deliberative manner, not by not by gimmick of changing what somebody has stated as the effective date of their resignation. In addition, there's, there's contractual matters that are in place as well. Yes. So it's not something you just do willy-nilly on the spot by changing a date you would either table it you would go back and discuss it or you know that's the proper procedure for addressing a matter like maybe, that maybe so we i'm not discussing anything personnel related that's not public in this community her public statement was on the district website was on district social media 
and I'm not discussing anything that's privy just to the board members. The resolution is up for everybody to see. Her public statement is up for everybody to see. Her public statement clearly said it's either June 30th or it could be sooner. So there is an ambiguity there. So I would like, so if there is an ambiguity that we are allowing an employee to have, and I think technically with this agenda, like how we have done previously, we, we followed the standard operating procedures, the resignation letter should have been in the attachments, which is missing. So we are flying in the dark here. We don't know what's in the resignation letter. The public statement is ambiguous. So that is the reason why I think this motion is on there to remove any ambiguity and say this is the date. I've given my legal opinion. I don't control the meeting. I've given my legal opinion. You. You're free to accept my legal opinion or not. My legal opinion is, is that that's not the manner in which you would address a dissatisfaction or a need to do something in a more expeditious manner by modifying what has been stated. I understand what you're saying about ambiguity. My legal recommendation would be that you either vote to accept the resignation or do not and or table the motion, the, the resolution or not, and then address it and then present it for the next meeting in a more deliberative manner than just on the spot saying we, we vote to change, which is basically saying we're terminating somebody prior to the date at which they are prepared to sever their relationship with the district contractually. So to the chair, I would like yep. to say that's an improper motion and I do not want us to see voted on it, the amendment. The motion to amend to yeah, I don't think we should vote on it. I think it's an improper motion because of these reasons that the attorney gave us. And I would agree. Are we obligated to vote on the motion as it's been put forth? Uh, or not necessarily? I guess I'm looking down at either AJ or uh, counsel. This, that's why I deferred to the, the attorney on this matter because, again, uh, I, I stated there's a contractual a contract that is in place. Right. And if you're in violation of a contract, which extends to 630, right. then it's going to be a legal proceeding going forward and adding to more legal bills. So um, from, from my perspective on what I just stated, um, I would say that you couldn't do anything like this without a proper discussion. And then it's your decision as the presiding officer, hearing the legal advice and hearing the decisions to make a decision, whether you're going to allow a vote or whether you're not. You're the presiding officer. Well, we, and we do have the right, obviously, as board members to not accept the resignation. So whether we vote on this motion or not, everyone has that right to say yay or nay to the, as listed, 630 to accept resignation at all, correct? So that proceeds. So uh -huh. more comments? Uh, let, let me understand. Uh, question. I think there's a way to uh, withdraw a motion, but I think you need permission of the assembly to do that, right? Not with an improper motion. motion. It's not an improper motion, but it I, is an improper no. motion according to That's, Robert's rule. Well, I'm sorry, okay. I have the, I'm Are sorry, you trying to amend floor. the motion or withdraw the motion? I have the floor. I take yeah. leave of the assembly to withdraw my motion. That just takes a simple majority vote. That, that would be an effective way to get beyond this issue right, for the time being. Of course. Okay. All in favor of Tom Aye. withdrawing the motion? Yeah. Aye. Any nays? Aye. Yes. There was um, a first and a second for that? Be a Tom, sorry. Tom I made the first second. to withdraw his motion. Okay. I can second. Sai is seconding that. All in favor of the withdrawal of that motion? Aye. Aye. Was there a nay? Or we're good? Okay. Uh, just one comment, yeah. um, Jordan, is yeah. if if we have the designation letter, which I think Dr. Worley said she has submitted it, I think the public and the board deserves to see it. So if you if it can be published, that would be great. I'm not I'm not opposed to that. Uh, you, you didn't ask me personally, but I haven't seen it either. So if, if that is possible, I guess so we'll look back I, I received it today. Okay. So if that can be shared with, with the board, that that would be so just one clarification. So the public statement was made the week of right after Christmas. I think that's right. And when I asked for, did do we when the agenda was released for January 18th, I asked, do we have the resignation letter? It was answered with the same day, yes. But looks like we received it today on January 18th. The board at the time did receive a resignation letter. It was forwarded to the board. 
Okay. Did, An you, email? did you see it, Mr. Maybe, maybe I'm thinking of two different things of a formal letter, but are you, is there a, sorry, but AJ, is there a different letter we're talking about or is that you received today? No, no. Go ahead, Dippy. So I believe. It, it, let me I'll just clarify. AJ has a formal signed letter from the superintendent. Is that correct? Because, because, okay. Okay. Got it. Okay. So, can I just go ahead, Dippy? Yeah. So I was going to say we did receive that email. I think it was the day after Christmas. It is, yes. Uh, but okay. beyond the email, I don't think I have seen like a signed, like a, you know, anything other than the that's email. That's what I thought we were talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that's why I, I yeah. figured you were thinking of that. I don't think we have seen anything beyond the email as a letter with the signature, you know, making it sort of formal, so, if you will. So Jordan, I'd just like to sure. clarify. Sure. When Dr. Varley sent the email to me at the time as, as board president, I forwarded it to the board. That's correct. So the board did receive the resignation letter. They did see it. I just want to clarify but that. We do need, um, like we have seen with the other administrators, we need a signed letter if we're voting on the resolution today. And that's, that's not necessarily true. You have a written expression of resignation in writing. Uh, an email is sufficient written evidence of somebody's intent. If you accept that intent that's been put in writing, I'd like I do not believe somebody would be able to prevail and say, well, I didn't give you a signature, so you now have to I want to withdraw my resignation. Once the board votes to accept the resignation, it's accepted. And if, and if you have it in writing, you have it in an email. So with all due respect, Mr. Wenzel, when we hire an administrator, the contract is has to be reviewed and approved and signed by the county superintendent. That's the contract. And then at the receipt of that contract, the administrator signs and accepts it. Yes. It's not done. That's true, right? Yes, but you can't, there's not there's there's you can't force somebody to continue to work after for you after they've given you documentation in writing conclusively evidencing their intent to resign as of an effective date and say, sorry, we're not going to accept any resignation ever from you unless we get something with a signature, even though we have an email from you that is clearly from you, acknowledged by you in public of your intent. We're not going to accept it unless we get a signature from you. Go ahead, Can I chime in? So yeah. I'm hearing the concern that Sai is raising, and I think it's a valid one because the, the the date is it's either you know the date in the letter or something earlier. Um, I haven't seen that to be honest anywhere. When somebody resigns, it is here is the the date that you know as effective as of this date. So I, I think there is a point there about uh, us just being aligned as a board as to what exactly is the date that we are approving, right? Uh, this here is a date that's sort of ambiguous in the email. Uh, can I make a motion to amend this particular item and separate out that specific line? Um, what is it? Uh, item J. Uh, just remove Dr. Varley's line item in there. Can we table that? Vote on the other items. And I think we, we just need, as a team, a, a conversation on what is the date because it's important like she is the most important person right now in terms of the district hierarchy so in other words leave the rest of item j intact remove dr varley from the agenda is is the ask that's my motion okay. that's the motion to amend item j on the agenda well you would table the it would... dr varley correct so your motion is to table uh, dr varley's resignation i I guess um and so do we have clarity on on the date is the is the till, ask till we for right the next till we agenda. have till, till we have the clarity on the date so I suppose it's two things we you know can we just table the one item um, yes. or Miss Kana's point I would also note in here that I do see that Dr. Varley says tentative so that's a valid point yeah although she so I, I but I do say that she does write to Miss Penna saying this letter and it does have an email signature but to your point about a tentative date being stated that is evidenced by the writing so so if we can 
just remove that item, table only that item, and move on with the others. Second on that motion? Second. So we are not accepting a resignation by Dr. Varley. We're tabling it. Is that correct? That's the motion. Only if you pass the motion. Right. So doesn't her contract dates don't in order for this to move forward, doesn't it have to be approved? I I find this I find this pretty embarrassing, honestly. So do I. I, so do I, I just her letter was pretty clear. Yeah, I agree. That she was doing the June thirtieth for the benefit of the district. Yeah. Right, that she was going to stick with us to the end of the school year, unless we so choose and we found an interim sooner. Right. I think the letter is pretty clear on that. Now, asking her to be more clear, I think is fine, but the need to actually table this, I'm not sure. I think just asking her to be specific on when she wants to leave and when we're prepared for that, but I don't see how any of this helps the district. I really, really don't. And I'm, I'm, um, disheartened that that this is even in the conversation um because my conversation about dr varley was going to be a thank you so um for what she has done um for what she has put up with in our district um i don't think many superintendents could have dealt with some of the things that she dealt with and uh the way people treated her um it is not easy to be a woman in power as many of us here know um and it's um I think it was very difficult because she was brought in for change and she made a lot of change happen. We have full day kindergarten. We also have Woodruff is now a much fuller building. It was it was quite empty um, compared to what it is now and it's thriving under um, Mrs. Marley. And we saw a huge difference in our early childhood education and curriculum um, by bringing Mrs. Kopaz in and um, now Mrs. Seminario, Dr. Seminario, um, to really focus on these young students. And so I think we do need to thank her for her time. She got us through COVID, which so many districts struggled with and we were able to do. So I, I just find this whole thing just really disheartening. And I, again, I, I want you to think about how we have to find a new superintendent. And this is not um, to the benefit of the district. It really is not when we are trying to find a new superintendent. We'll go Gail and then Natasha. If we, if we table this, then we have effectively halted our search for a superintendent. That our February 8th meeting search for a superintendent is, is invalid because now we don't have a resignation of our superintendent. And that was that was going to be my point. Tasha. So um, I, I did ask Dr. Varley for the letter because it wasn't in the attachments and she did forward it to me. Um, and just in terms of the date, um, you know, speaking strictly about the date, um, she did say she's tentatively setting my end date is June 30th. However, I wish to inform you that I'm currently pending negotiations with another entity and may, this may necessitate a modification of the date. So um, point being is that, you know, if we're, if we are thinking about the good of the district and potentially bringing someone in as an interim uh, superintendent, um, we do need to be able to, if we're interviewing candidates, to give somebody a date for when they can expect to, you know, to be hired. We can't interview also and just say, well, it might be April, it might be June, we don't know. Um, so I think that's also an important aspect of the tentative, you know, why I think it's important to have a set date. So when we do look, go and search, we can give somebody a date for when they can start. I mean, I, my own personal take on some of this is that I, it's not realistic that we're going to find full time by April. It might be a pipe dream by June, mm -hmm. but that's maybe optimistic. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know that those dates necessarily impact the, the start date of someone new per se. Um, I do think we should endeavor tonight to at least get the engine going, as I think I think we all agree at some point tonight. Um, so 
I just yeah. want to say that we we often amend start dates um, and leave dates right. often. Yeah. I mean, there's it's people good. in here that we've already approved other times, but we're doing a new date. So this is not uncommon because you are working with multiple districts trying to right. get this move. So as Dr. Varley leaves and we bring someone new in, even if it's an interim superintendent, those dates will change based on their availability right? That will always change. So the idea yeah. that we we have to have a finalized date is, is not accurate. Well, and the resolution to accept it as of June 30th just establishes that it would not go beyond June 30th. Right. That would be the last day, regardless of what her intentions are beyond June 30th. I think we also acknowledge that she put June 30th down there. So we have to um, allow her to, if she wants to stay to the end of her contract, to be allowed to do that. So I think it's important that we recognize that. Um, I'd also like to just uh, echo what Pam was saying. Re oh, I'd like to echo what Pam was saying because I also found this all disheartening that we're talking about her end date when she's specified that she's prepared to stay until the, to the end of her contract. But I think we need to just mention, I'd like to thank Dr. Vali uh, for all that she's done for our school district during her tenure. I, th I think we need to talk a little bit about that. Um, as president this last year, I actually got to, to know a little bit better, and I witnessed firsthand her commitment to the students, the staff, the teachers, and she's always prioritized, prioritized putting the students first, and while doing that, continuing to try and move the district forward. She, I know her tenure has been turbulent, um, and I'd like to focus on some of the things that she actually has accomplished while she was here. Pam mentioned it, full day kindergarten. That was a huge task. This district had been wanting full-day kindergarten for the last 20 years. And the reason I know this is because I was on the other side as a parent, and I've attended multiple meetings wanting to have full-day kindergarten. And nobody wanted to take on the challenge. And she took that challenge head on. And she knew that the only way to do that was to rely on the district so that we could make space for full-day kindergarten. And like Pam said, full-day kindergarten is flourishing. We're having multiple people interested in moving to this district because we have full day kindergarten. And the board supported her at the time. Pandemic, when we had the pandemic, we literally switched a button and the school went almost remote almost overnight. So that's something she's got to be commended for. When the state said that it was okay for the schools to come back, Dr. Varley pushed and pushed to bring students back to in-person learning. And I know there was a lot of pushback for her, but she knew that for the benefit of the students, that for their mental health, that it was so much better to have students in person. And she pushed. She prioritized and championed DIR initiatives because she wanted every student to feel safe when they came to school. She focused on the real alignment of, educa of ele elementary education. And she brought in like, Ms. Stanley said she brought in educators like Ms. Kopex, who, who focused on realigning our, ed, early ed, our elementary education. Because as she said, starting your education from full degree kindergarten right up through elementary to your high school is where it needs to start. There needs to be a focus on early education. And she prioritized that. So she also looked this year, and I worked closely with her on the technology community and uh, communications committee, and I know Pam did. She focused on building new infrastructure because we have old infrastructure. We have challenges with our infrastructure. And she focused on bringing, building new infrastructure. And these are just to say a few of the things that she's actually done. So I think we need to commend her for all the work she's done. I know she's had a turbulent uh, tenure, but I think we need to focus on the important things that she's done. And I think we really need to commend her for it. And I would just like to wish her the best. And Hope that she's happy in and in, in her future endeavors. Thanks, Angela. Dipti was Thanks, Thomas. With... We'll, we'll, go, we'll go Tom and then Dipti. All right, Tom. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, this makes me a little nervous about having no uh, specific. Uh, okay. There's there's no specific uh, notice requirement, and we know she's in some sort of negotiations. So it's possible to come back and say, I'm out of here. And what are we going to do? I, I, I mean, think, I, uh, to keep me honest here, the contract does, her contract does stipulate she owes us at least 60 days or is it 90 days notice at minimum? 90, 90 days. days. Yeah. So she can't say I'm out of here, but she can't say I'm out of here in 
90 days, if that's accurate by the contract. Is that right? Yes. I have to look at the contract, but most would provide for a 90 day notice of a contract of this duration. I mean, there could be a 60 day in there. I don't have the contract in front of me right now, but whatever the contract provides, there is a requirement to provide a, a specific amount of notice. So does this, uh, does this uh, December 27th letter constitute a, a 90 day notice? I read it to constitute more than a 90 day notice. I read it to constitute notice of not to continue beyond the end of her contract and to run out her contract, potentially give notice that she will definitely not be working for the district beyond June 30th, okay. but that if whatever negotiations she's involved with materialize and she, she wanted to come back to the board and say, okay, my contract requires, I have to give you this amount of notice consider that I've given you now, no, I, I, I will give you the what I have to under my contract, but I would like to invoke my contract rights to only give you that amount of not notice and not the six months notice that I provided. Okay, so we might, we could expect another notice if, if she wants to, otherwise it, it's possible. Otherwise it runs to June 30th, okay. Yes. Do you have something, Dipti? Yeah, Dipti. I, I want to go back to my motion and withdraw it because this conversation, I think, is going in a different direction. So motion to withdraw my last motion. Second on the withdrawal of that motion? A second. Okay. And just a voice vote okay on that, AJ? All, right. yeah. All in favor of withdrawal of that motion? Aye. Aye. Any nays? Okay. Aye. Yeah. Uh, but right. I want to... Any nays? I, I didn't there, hear there were, any names. There were no names. No names. No names. No. No names. So just to reiterate, like how everybody has their opinion. They have experienced it. I know many. I know I I remember the very first board meeting that I attended as a young parent in this town was to ask for full day kindergarten. So I wanted full day kindergarten. I think I went on the the township forum and started a survey or a poll of sorts. Um, I think I met a lot of young moms and then we came to Mr. Reinstein, who was the president, who asked us to go to Ann Curley Hand. It was like running around, running in circles. But we all wanted full day kindergarten. But the way it was done during pandemic without the Department of Education approval, with violating the state laws on bidding, not, and then it was done all in the name of equity. Look at our enrollment numbers. We all have an attachment of enrollment numbers. William Woodruff is flourishing in for as an early education center. But we have another school, Hughes, which is packed with packed classrooms. It's the smallest elementary school in our district, while Mountain Park class sizes are less lower. So where is the equity? We were told, wait for two years, wait for three years. The traffic, this town, was originally with our old original town planners was planned to have neighborhood schools where children could walk and bike. And I can vouch for it because I have seen many walk to William Woodruff. Now the entire district for their K to two students have either got to drive them or if you're, if you're within two miles or somebody has, to, or you have to take a bus, the traffic in front of William Woodruff is really dangerous. Same thing with Snyder. We don't have any um, sidewalks. I was on the rescue squad. If there was an emergency call on Briarwood in front of Woodruff during pickup or drop off, there is no way for emergency responder vehicles to get to. Same thing on MKM. So with all due respect, we can commend her or we can be very honest about what this has done to our district. And the traffic situation is not going to get any better. We all wanted full day kindergarten, but this was not the way to go down with it. And so, the, there is no equity. We have packed, we are packing students like sardines at Hughes. There is a letter from the principal at Hughes. And now we, there is no equity and we don't have any plans. So this is my opinion and this is my experience and many parents can vouch for it. So we need to look at it because 
this is something that we have to deal with it as a board. And I raise this concern because I have seen other administrators' resignation letters. There has to be some clarity on when is it actually the end date. So if we are going to, at, on the February 8th meeting, if we're going to start talking about an interim, what is the job posting going to look like? When is the start date going to be for the interim? Is it going to be end of April, end of May, early June? And let's not kid ourselves. When are the superintendents, good superintendents, looking to be hired? They want to come here at least two to three months before the school year starts. By putting this date at the very end of the school year, how are we going to go with our interview? Who is going to apply for us? All the good superintendents will be taken. So yeah. I want I, to I know. Yeah. yeah. So I will, I'm not, I'm willing to vote on this motion, yeah. but with the comment, I want it documented. I think AJ is not here. So I don't know if Mr. Giordano is taking minutes or who's taking minutes. It's being recorded. So, well, yes. Basically. So some, I want this documented in the meeting minutes that within 24 to 48 hours, we request for a signed letter and we request for some clarity if it's possible. Thank you. Discussion okay. is never in minutes, just for FYI. True. Uh, um, any, any, I, I think we can, Captain Obvious, we're not, we're not going to necessarily agree on, on the, the tenure of Dr. Varley, positive, negative here tonight, but um, can we, are there other comments, questions on, on any other item uh, under personnel? Uh, and then, because it sounds like we've, we're back to the, an intact uh, resolution. Yeah, no, in I, I'm not asking for my discussion points to be documented. I want what is documented is I we, we would like to request for a signed resignation letter, like how we get from other administrators. And that has to be shared. That is what I'm requesting. And if there can be some clarity on the end date, that would be great. I will check with the business office. I, not business office. I will check with the, with the office, the ladies in the office tomorrow to see if there's a letter somewhere. And I will. Okay. Thank you. Other comments, questions? Tom? Sorry, I'm, okay, I so keep missing you. My, I've got bad angles here. Yeah. I, All right. I, voted, I just want to make sure my vote is recorded correctly here because I, uh, I tried to amend Jay and then I withdrew it. So I don't think right. I ever voted on Jay itself. We, we, didn't, we didn't vote yet. We, we didn't vote on, on anything here. Okay. Yeah. All right. We just we, we added and then pulled back twice. Go ahead, Dipti. Uh, I had a question on item J, actually, it's the same item. Uh, I believe we have one um, staff listed in here uh, as resignation, and I think the same staff member is back on agenda item E. I was just wanting to make sure that I'm reading this right. Um, it's from the bottom second to last, it's the same staff member resigning and then also being approved as substitute uh, supplemental personnel. I just wanted to make sure that it's not an error. No, that's not an error. Any more comments, questions? What? Sorry, one more. Yeah. Uh, we're creating the position. Um, I think this is number um, item R, but actually I will double check the new agenda. That we are creating the, the one FTE position. Um, I just wanted to confirm that it's S. Okay, now it's S. It used to be R, now it's S, yes. Um, once we approve it here, that will be factored into the budget for next year. I just wanted to confirm the, the sequence. Yes. That's not a position that's going away. So, yes, we were, we are in the process of already factoring that into the budget. The preliminary talks, um, as Mr. as AJ <clears throat> excuse me, started, we knew that was coming down the pike, and that's going to have to be factored in, yes. Did you go to roll call or anything else? Let's go to roll call. Uh, Mrs. Penna. Mrs. Jolly. Yes, to all. Ms. Akiri. Yes, to all. Ms. Bradford. Yes, to all. Dr. For... Hold on. I'm sorry about that. Dr. Forger. For eager. Yes, For to all. Eager. For eager. 
Mr. Hyman. Yes, on items A through R, as in Foraker, R. Mrs. Connor. Yes, to all. Uh, I will say conditional on us getting alignment on the date for Dr. Warley. Mrs. Stanley. Yes. Motion passes. Uh, moving to business. Items uh, A through F, all board members, uh, and items G through H for Berkeley Heights. Can I have a motion? Um, I just want to make a note, and we've had this discussion, and I, I probably did not do this and realized this from before. B, as we discussed from before, I know, I believe I sent out statute according to B, and I believe that we need to add the superintendent and treasurer to that resolution from our prior discussions, if I'm not mistaken. I'd like to add those on there to include in that resolution. Do you need a board member to motion as such, or can we just add I've, it right now? I, I'm, I'm doing it so we can add that right now. I believe that's I can do that. Let right. I'd be happy to, to add to the uh, superintendent, the, the president. The according to as a, did you say the board president and the, uh, no, the it would be board secretary, superintendent, and treasurer. Okay. The, wait a minute, I think chief school administrator is also required. Yeah, that's super yeah. That's super oh, Okay, state it again. President of the board. Designation chief. of board secretary, superintendent, and treasurer to sign school warrants pursuant to the statute. Uh, the statute reads that it would be under 18A colon 19-1 if this is if this is to be consistent with the statute. The statute provides that the warrant should be signed by either the president, board president, secretary, and treasurer, or the treasurer. So if you're going with the board secretary to be consistent with 18A19-1, it should be board secretary, board president, and uh, treasurer. And treasurer. So we and the board secretary, at you, you are you serving as the who's the who's the treasurer for the district? There's a gentleman uh, that that does that. Okay. So we we're removing superintendent su superintendent and replacing it with a different different word. Wait a minute. No, we have. I think we need the superintendent, the CSA, or. Yeah. You would keep the superintendent. It would be the board secretary, superintendent, and treasurer. treasurer. All three of them have to sign. Yeah. So we need a motion to yes. amend as such to add those three titles. I got. Okay. I'm writing this down. You got secretary, president, treasurer, and superintendent. No, so CSA, as in superintendent, treasurer, and secretary, board secretary. Let's see. Not president. No. Uh, yeah, but uh, you want to make that motion? No, I'm not so sure about Wait, that. Wait, Dr. Farger is looking the at the statute. And I'll, and I'll but I can read the statute. I have the statute yeah, here that I, I can I read. I can read the policy. So, okay. You know, uh, board policy 171 duties of the board president and vice president uh, sign all school district warrants. Okay, that's 171. Tr duties of the treasurer of school monies, that's policy 172 says uh, these warrants are signed by president, secretary, and treasurer. Right, that's what I just read. Yeah, and part th uh, number paragraph three says uh, payroll warrants are signed by president, superintendent, and secretary. And that cites uh, 18A, 19-9, and 19-10. The resolution isn't limited to just payroll. So that's uh, the resolution is for school warrants generally. So they do include payroll warrants, right? Yeah. The way the resolution reads, yes. Right. So, so if they, if they include payroll warrants, then we need to add the board president and the vice president, according to eighteen A, nineteen hyphen nine. 
if the school warrants are holistically everything and they include payroll warrants, then we have to go by NJSA 18A colon 19-1 and 19-9, which has board president and vice president. Sure. Go ahead, Deputy. Sorry, Mr. Wenzel, can I ask a quick question here? My 18A, question. can I just address the point made by Ms. Security uh, referencing 18A colon 19-9? Uh, 18A 19-9 does not reference warrants uh, or the eight. And your bylaw that had Mr. Juskowitz, I think, putting that on the agenda was based upon your bylaw. But 18A colon 19-9 just states that the payment of compensation of teachers and other employees may be made on the basis of payroll certified by the president and secretary of the board and the chief administrator. Yes. So in a district which has a treasure. Go ahead. Go ahead. So my question is. If 18A 19-9 includes the president, that's what we are asking. So, for I thought you said vice president. I'm sorry. I thought yeah, I heard you say president. vice president. Yeah, president. She did, she did mention yeah. vice president. Because well. our policy has both of them, but the state law has president. So all we are saying is if we are amending the designation of signer for school warrants and they include, include payroll warrants, we want four people on there. We want the board secretary, the board president, the treasurer and the CSA, four people to sign these warrants because these include payroll warrants. Well, there isn't four, there's three. And I believe that when you just read the statute, it said either or, correct? We're going back to 18, which is what the resolution references, 18A colon 19-1, 18A colon 19-1, uh, if you were modeling or patterning the resolution after the language of the statute, it says that money or funds of the board in the custody of the secretary or treasurer of school money shall be expended by the secretary or treasurer of school monies by and only by warrants, each made payable to the order of the person entitled to receive the amount thereof and specifying the object for which the warrant is issued signed by the president and secretary of the board of education and the chief school administrator three president secretary of the board and chief school administrator or or by the treasurer of school monies as appropriate to the district so we need to add board president on here as well of course to be in compliance with the statute yes so that's the motion we need tom get all that I, I'm I'm about ready to add all the board members to sign. But first, we have to move the motion before we can amend it. Yeah, we, we have. So moved. I will Correct. move resolution A through F for all board members, and move resolutions D through H for Berkeley Heights only. Thanks, Pam. We have a second on that. Second. Okay, second, Angela, and then Tom. Do you want to make the motion on the amendment? Okay. I'm going to have some amendments here, but I I think we we need to do these in order. Uh, I'm sorry. Did, we didn't finish. Did we finish? We okay. What is the? Can you read the amendment? Uh, the, the proposition B as amended. I I will read it. So I move to amend um, under business B designation of signer for school warrants, a designation of board secretary, superintendent, treasurer, and board president to sign school warrants pursuant to NJSA 18A-19-1. Stanley, you do not need the treasurer if you have the board president secretary. Would we like to remove the treasurer, anyone? No, it has no, to I be or. I, I want it. No, but their statute says or. It says board president, board secretary, I, and, I, and or, it says board president. President and secretary. And CSA, and or CSA or treasurer. treasurer. Okay. You don't need the treasurer with the board president, CSA, and board secretary. All right. So I will read it one more time. Designation of board secretary to sign. Uh, sorry, 
board secretary, superintendent, board president, or treasurer to sign school warrants pursuant to NJSA 18A 19-1. I'll second that. Thank you. Okay. You need to vote on that, or is that a, do you want to the, the, roll call? Vote? the next thing would be to vote on the amendment. Yeah. Right. Correct. Okay, so let's let's take so care we, of that. Can we roll call on that, or do you want? Voice vote is fine. Okay. All in favor of that amendment? Aye. 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 Any nays? Yes. Yes, nay, or no, no, no I, nay. I'm sorry. That was a okay. delay. That was a delay. That was a delay. Eight oh as amended. Yes. Okay. okay. Did you have another amendment you wanted to make? Yeah. Uh, I want to amend uh, policy 131 in our bylaws. Uh, I want to revert the whole thing back to the website version dated 2022 8 30, last revised. February 15, 2001. So I think that's an improper motion since it's not on the agenda. I'm sorry, <laughs> I, I still have the floor. And no, I, I can I can object in a proper motion anytime, according to Robert's rule. Yeah, but it's, what's, there's nothing improper about it. It's a, it's a it's not on the agenda. It's not on the agenda. Too. We're adopting policies, right? No. What? Number so agenda oh, item run B. B. Okay, okay, okay. No. You're talking about D, D, D right? D. D. D, yeah, readopt all policies, bylaws, and regulations. Before we adopt the policies, I want to amend a few of them. But also we would need to send that to a, a policy committee because that's what no, we that's have. Not, that's not, we don't have a board president. Uh, sorry, that's not it. true. That is true. That's not true. It is true. Okay, can we address our questions and can the, let's, can let's, the let's presiding the, officer, yeah. Let's, okay, let's so, finish your thoughts on here. Okay, so before we adopt... 131, I, I offered amendment to 131. That's all. Okay. Uh, so the next thing would be to uh, vote on that amendment. And then we could move on to other policies. So just to clarify, I mean, my understanding with amend with policy amendments, typically we would, if there is an amendment, it would be discussed and then that language goes back for first reading on an amended Second. policy. It goes so, to policy okay. committee, and then it goes to the agenda for first reading, right. and then back to be adopted at second reading. That's how we do it. That's how we change the main policies. Okay, so, so it would, and so then we're going to table one thirty one pending uh, an answer from the policy committee. Is that right? That's a motion. That's Natasha. Were you going to add to that? Uh, I was just going to ask a question. So if, um, because it is readoption of all board policies and regulations, um, and if there are some policies that we are concerned with, and as you know, Dr. Forger is concerned with, um, is reverting to prior version um, an option simply because the prior versions had gone through um, first and second reading, they were previously approved. And so um, by the board, so now if, you know, I understand we can't amend the language of them, but if we revert to back to something that was previously approved, I just wanted to understand if that is a possibility. You, like, just one second. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Kel. So I was on the policy committee and you can amend a policy committee, um, a policy in the committee at any time. You can take it to the committee, ask for a revision of it, and then it would come to first reading and then second reading. So this is unnecessary because we can adopt all the ones that we have. And then if there's any question on any policy, then it would go back to the policy committee for revision, talked about it, discussed, then put up for first reading and second reading for final adoption. Well, that's the that would be the recommended procedure to be to be operating in a deliberative fashion. This no, this motion that's on, which was noted as being in your annual bylaws as being an annual, that is a basically a a, a matter of what what is in the law is called comedy, c o m i t y of 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 your understanding. As I had mentioned at the last meeting, you're coming into an ongoing concern with a board that has had policies that have been approved by the board, but perhaps not this board, but a board that was responsible for operating the district. You have policies, and Dr. Farger has noted you ha you're not bound even by readopting the policies that have been duly adopted by this board in the course of business prior to this board. Um, 
you're not saying you agree with all those policies you're adopting them that they were duly adopted in the course of business in a court by the previous boards that have been responsible for the operation of the district pursuant to bylaw 131 you as a board have a right either through committee or even at a subsequent meeting to say, okay, we you couldn't be bound, let's say at your next meeting, to say, oh, Dr. Farger, you now want to bring up uh, an, uh, an amendment by motion. You can't now bring that up because you voted to read. That can't be used against Dr. Farger. That's the proper procedure would be to say, let's, let's talk about policy 131 at another meeting or at a committee or what have you. The, the, the pro forma motion of readopting all your policies is, is, is Again, it's, you, we're bringing it up because it was in your bylaw. It's not in many bylaws today, and not and not all districts do it at reorganization meetings. It's not required for your policies to have been duly adopted and to remain effective until you, as a board, take deliberative action to change those policies. If I, if I may, I just wanted just to, um, for those of you listening who may not understand why we're um, pushing on this one, um, so the, the policy was revised um, to it's a policy dealing with um, uh, ma making policies actually. And as the board, that's one of our main functions or a policy making body. However, the way that this um, policy was amended, it gives a lot, it in injects the superintendent into the process where the superintendent can review any drafts prior to them coming to the board. So it kind of, it, it, we, it, in that last amendment, it kind of, to, to this policy, I know it was approved through first and second reading, but it really takes away some of our board powers to make policy um, in that it kind of puts in a filter by like, by someone who's our employee in terms of what things come down the pike and what things we can review. Now, I don't know if that was, you know, done in practice in the committee, if that's the, you know, the exact procedure that was followed, but the way this policy reads, we've kind of, you know, usurped our power a little bit as a policy making body by having that kind of filter in there. Obviously the, the superintendent's input is, is valuable, but I don't think it should be um, something that, you know, one person who works for us decides which drafts come come to us. Can I add something to Natasha's point? Sure. So right again. my biggest concern with this policy 131 is only the superintendent, only the superintendent can recommend a change to a policy. That's not accurate. It's number. We're, we're, we're talking right now about making amendments to to within within the process that we follow, no, no, no. I any board member can. The current reading, the bylaw one thirty one. Yeah. Who it's number. It's a, I mean, number one says a recommendation for a no. new or revised bylaw shall be recommended by, to the board mm -hmm. and or superintendent. Who who recommends it? Uh, a board member oh, has that ability. Second. Sure, this is our policy. The board may suspend operation of yeah, which one published or the no, no, no. no the current version this is the published version yeah. right it does say that they should be submitted to the superintendent if that's if that's the question yeah can I just state something too about policies and the superintendent's role in being delegated the responsibility by the board to manage the policy manual and to bring policies that come across the superintendent's desk by the policy services that many districts utilize. The one that's most prominently utilized by most districts throughout the state is Strauss Esme. New Jersey School Boards also has a policy, but the majority of boards use Strauss Esme. The language in this policy doesn't make it right, but it's consistent. It's it's also not something that this board came up with on its own. That language is is standard language in Strauss Esme's policy, and that language I submit. If you were to survey the districts in Union County, you would find probably that most of the districts have the language that's recommended by Strauss Esme in Policy One Thirty One. So it's not some power grab or attempt that it goes outside the process that is utilized by a lot of districts that utilize the Strauss SMA reporting process. I'm not saying it makes it right. I'm not saying it makes it something the board has to agree to, but it's not something that 
was just devised by this board. Right. And I, I'm on the policy committee. So yes, any board member can make it. And Tom is on there too. So he knows that we use Strauss Esme and we use the superintendent to tell us this is a mandated policy or this is a policy that we have input into. We can change it. So any policy can be made by a board member goes to the policy committee. The superintendent can make an, a recommendation or she cannot, but she does not control the drafts that come into the committee. The committee discusses it, talks about it. If we need to go back to her, she will go to Strauss Esme for us because we don't do that and ask any questions that we have. Then we will bring it back to the board for a first reading and then we look to discuss it and then it goes to a second reading. So this is not giving our superintendent, whoever he or she will be, will be any type of power over our policy. Uh, Dipti, do you want to say something? And then I, I found it, so. Yeah, so two quick points. Um, so yes, I believe Strauss Esme does kind of, uh, you know, publish these uh, updates to a lot of school districts. And interestingly enough, that particular policy is on Berkeley Heights. I think it's on Summit. Um, it's it's not a new providence. It's not in Watching Hill. So it depends on the individual district boards to make the determination if they want to take the language or the recommendation. Um, and I think the, the crux of the conversation that we're having right now is this resolution is is sort of readopting everything that's on the books right now. And this is sort of an opportunity for anybody who wants to bring up a concern or say, here are the things that we need to go back and revisit. So I think it's it's a valid point that Tom's raising. Uh, that particular policy, 131 bullet point number four, the way we have adopted it actually does give the superintendent the, the position that Natasha was articulating. So, so point number four is all proposed under this policy, Jordan, if you want to go look at it. I'm looking at it. Uh, it's point yeah. number four. All proposed new and revised bylaws, policies, and regulations shall be submitted to the superintendent. The superintendent or designate will review all new and revised drafts, bylaws, policies, and regulations prior to the board receiving a draft of new or revised bylaws, mm -hmm. policies, or regulations for board consideration. If we are a policy-making body, yeah. I think we need to have we need to remove this language. And that is the reason for the amendment. And if you go on the district website into the policy book, and there is a published version and there is an archived version. And all that we are trying to do is going back to the archived version, which did follow the process, which went through the first reading and the second reading, which doesn't have this point in there. So we are willing to readopt all the policies and bylaws Yep. provided this reverts back to an archived version and then we are all in sync. We are so, all in compliance. I mean, my, my thought is obviously we have no committees yet, but that would be something that happens ideally quickly in a perfect world. Cause I'm guessing there's other suggestions, amendments to other policies that we may all have. You are so good at yes. I'm pretty, I'm pretty good. Yes. Every now and again, every now and again, I, I think the way to do this similar to how we did board goals and other things would be to aggregate if we can do that aggregate all of the wish list changes to that committee quickly because that committee ideally would form, uh, I'm hoping at the next meeting. I, mean, I don't know if that's, if that's uh, because to me, if we, if we have a president, vice president, that's the time to do committees and have everything again with the right to make amendments across the year, because we have that, that right. Uh, that That's the way to do it. That would be, uh, no, I think, all we're efficient, is, but yeah. All, I agree with you. All we're saying is if we can if we can switch back to archived version, we can follow your process too. We can go back to archived versions on a couple of policies. You can't amend a policy then, without a first and second reading. I, right. I'm not asking you, I'm not asking with Jordan to yeah. make any amendments to policies. I'm saying That's the published version went through the first and the second work. But and, if you're asking for a prior version, that's different language from what is currently on the books. Is that is that the question? Can we go back to a version that is yeah, which, which did follow the that's, process that would require then, us to change the policy? Yes, well, but yeah, and because some of these policies, like um, Ch you, changing the policy is is the same thing that we're talking about. It requires us so to say, okay, the, so we, we'd like to propose. Archived, so some of these policies, one sixty four, one fifty five, yeah. were done during lame duck session. One of them was actually approved at the very last meeting 
in December 2023, which was with an intent. So all we are saying is we are a new board. We are readopting everything. We would like to go back to the previous versions of three policies. And then we can talk to talk about them once a committee is formed. Because these are the policies that we are going to abide by. Yeah, I don't. I, I, th I mean, my my own personal instinct, instinct is that it's it's a non-starter because that still requires us to change the language to a prior version, which is even if we take one word out, it's a, it's a different version. So we need to change it. Follow the process. We should put it through committee Correct. and do it as a board and vote on it first and second. That's how we've done everything else. Every other modification along the road with stress estimate, we've done that tedious as it's been. That's the way to do it versus. I'm not sure there's another, the only other option is you can vote no, obviously, to, to the policy as it is. Thank you. Were there other? Yes, I, I agree with what you're saying. And you, any policy can be looked at and revised. And I mean, I know Tom and I were on the committee, and we would change sometimes just one word in a policy. Uh, and then, you know, it would have to be, uh, Dr. Raleigh would then submit it, or a comma, we would change a type of puncture, yes. Yeah. So we have done that, but that goes through our committee, our policy committee. Yeah, and and, I, and I'm I'm not saying that there aren't things that we that we probably should change. So I, I'm I'm not disagreeing with you there at all. I think we should just do it if we can do it all in one fell swoop. At least get the process going. I think that's going to make, while it'll be tedious for the first meeting of that uh, policy committee, it I think it puts us on a, on a good path. Angela, go ahead. I was just going to say I think we well, need to follow procedure. It needs to go back to policy, and we need to follow procedure the way we've done it, and and I believe that's the way to do it. And go back to policy committee. And I learned a lot being on that policy committee. I went to workshops and things on this and, you know, there is a procedure for doing it. And Tom and I, you know, we followed it and, uh, you know, and that, that works. I don't, I don't think the, uh, policy committees even exist yet. And I don't even know when they're going to exist. It does not but exist. They, yeah. uh, but all they can do is make recommendations and it will just come back to the board for adoption or no adoption. So we can do that. Correct. We can just for our first we, reading, it will come back. Yeah, we can just we can do that right tonight. Okay. But there's been there's been no detailed discussion, but, is what I'm saying, Tom, of of all of but, the policy recommendations that will be made from all board members. And I, I, that's just my again my instinct. Well, but I, you you I certainly don't have the right to not accept the readoption as is. That's uh, that's these your vote. are you know I have some simple changes. I'd like to. Okay, so I made my amendment. I think I had a second, right? What? This needs to go through policy committee. No, that's that's just your opinion. It's procedure. Robert's, that's how we've been doing. No, it. the Robert's Tom. rules is, I make an I make a motion to amend the policy. Okay, and so my amendment was to revert it back to website version dated 30 last revised February fifteenth, two thousand one. So that's what we need to vote on tonight. No, because it's not okay. proper procedure. In our in our policies, it says we need to have a first reading and a second reading. No, he's making an amendment. Okay. But I have not second. even seen, right? Like, so you you have not even presented me with that old policy, right? So mm -hmm. again, this needs to go through proper procedure before I can vote on it. That is Robert's rules and our own policies. That's, state that. that's not Robert's it's rules at true. all. It, uh, but it is how we've conducted business okay. as long as you've been on the board. We've okay. always had a first I'm, and second I'm reading. Trying for to every follow. Policy. Tom, you've been on the policy committee for I'm many sorry, years. I you understand how this works. Right, You're not recognized. I have the floor. Right, I have my amendment. Okay, so the next step is for the chairman to call for a vote on the amendment. That's call it. point of order, I, chairman. I, okay. Yeah, I, I, I don't know how we can vote on something that we can't approve because it, it we're voting on a we're voting for yeah we're voting what? for policy change that has not been this, this vetted be by the board this should be viewed as a first reading or gone or gone through or gone through it yeah it could be viewed as a first reading of a new policy but we haven't we haven't reviewed any language um, what yeah all right you, you just call a vote because for the reasons you've stated uh presiding officer and mr dr farger can yeah. vote no Ms. secure anyone else can vote no You've adopted these policies. You do have a deliberative process set forth for adopting, revising, amending policies. This readoption is, again, as I've stated, a matter it's about of formality, technically. Yes. But you, uh, yes. Doesn't mean we don't have the right, Tom, to it's make true. amendments, but we should do it the proper way. And, it, it, might, it might just take us two meetings to get there. And, and just as part of the formality, we put this on as a readoption because of 
of the reorganization, which is part of the procedure that has been followed here every year. Right. And that's why the word readoption. That's understood. Okay. Are there are there any other questions on on business? And then okay, maybe so, we can get to a roll call inclusive of whether right, you want to. So we're just going to vote right now on the amendment no. to 131. We're not going to vote on the amendment because we're, we're not going to vote on an amendment that, that would require changing the language of policies that we have not reviewed as a board. We also don't, I, I mean, there's, there's no, there's been no vetting of the language. I don't think that's a prerogative to deny a vote. Uh, I, I think if, no it, if it's, if, if it's not in line with our, with, with our policy and practice, it is. I think Dipti wants to speak. Dipti, I, yeah. So trying to navigate this and I suppose he's made a motion. Whoever wants to say yes could say yes, no, no could say no, and the motion will either move or it'll fail. Isn't that kind of the way it would be? And then we would go back to whatever is the main agenda. No. It, technically, we don't have to vote on every motion that's put forth. We actually we've had that happen in the last meeting too. We 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 don't have to vote on every motion that's put forth. If if it if it I guess my point is, it's not something we could even do even if it did pass. How do we vote to uh, automatically change language of multiple policies without having vetted the policies? The These were old uh, policies. I, that I think were... the, the new one, sorry, the new ones is if we go back to a policy that was approved originally. I think that's the point that uh, Tom's been trying to make is that we wouldn't do something or we wouldn't go back to a version that never was ever approved by a Berkeley Heights Board of Education. Am I understanding the logic here, Tom, is you're not suggesting any new words. You're suggesting go back to the last archived version of a policy that was approved. I would say there's also an argument that this violates the current policy 164, which is new business to uh, modify a policy which was not on the agenda. The On the agenda is a pro forma vote on whether you approve vote to adopt or readopt. You want to make separate applications and separate meetings to abolish policies, certainly your prerogative, but you do have a policy, a bylaw 164, which states that new business, which this constitutes new business, modifying a policy, you're not, you don't have on the agenda modifying a policy, you have readopting existing I was, policies. I was, um, if this board, the new board after reorganization has not adopted or readopted any of the policies, how are we going to abide by 0164? This was after I went back from the reorg meeting. Everybody kept saying 164 asks for a 48 hour notice. This board never voted to readopt the policies. Those were adopted at the last board meeting. So right now, you can't quote us and limit us and say, Hey, we have a policy 0164. We did not vote to abide by it. That's this, the vote right now. No, this board is not authorized. I mean, I guess you could, if you wanted to be completely non-deliberative, the board is, the motion is to readopt. If the board doesn't readopt the policies, the policies still are in effect. And the, and the district is still governed by those policies. And then you have a responsible deliberative process for modifying your policies, which has been mentioned by uh, Mr. Hyman, clearly set forth. And so you have a process also for changing those, which you have followed, uh, which this board has followed uh, for doing that. That's not on the agenda tonight. And so 164 is in effect uh, for this board until it's modified. And the resolution is to readopt, not to adopt. I disagree. I think the whole purpose of this resolution to readopt all policies and bylaws and so on is to allow this board to pick what policies it wants to have going forward. We are not bound by any of the existing policies. We are free to adopt and modify those policies tonight and go forward. Okay, so I don't agree with this interpretation that somehow we can't change anything tonight. It, um, um, you, you, yeah. Look, you, you obviously you have the right to vote no. A four-four vote yeah. or 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 different would okay. would not readopt, but it would remain in place anything that's been 
on the books to date, which would include our existing policy. So I I, ironically, it, it probably is the same either way until we actually do the work of making changes to policy, which we have the right to do and and, and we should do with a committee. Um, with all more than just this policy. For with all due respect, yeah. Mr. Wenzel's interpretation is not accurate. The new board needs to re-adopt policies and bylaws that we will abide by. And if we are not comfortable with the language on some of them, we can exclude them from this part, from this amendment. Just and your you, you, would, you would need a five to three vote to exclude them yeah, from the amendment. So, yes, but right. then if just because let's say you in your response just now you said you can you have a right to vote no. Yes, we, we yeah. vote no. Yes. And if it's a four four, that doesn't automatically say that the policies are in effect. No, because the policies are not in effect because we as a board after reorganization in 2024 have decided not to adopt them. So you can't just say that you're getting grandfathered in to these policies. Position is if you don't readopt the policies, the district has no policies then. That is the reason at the re That's your position, okay. We'll accordingly. What, what, what policies do we abide by as we sit right now is my question to the board. The only thing that's in effect are state laws and Robert's rules of order until we adopt policies. And we were supposed to re-adopt them at the reorg. That has happened in this district for over two decades, so, which, we, which somehow, even after a lot of back and forth for two weeks with four members asking for this particular resolution to be on, was removed. And then only after a lot of deliberation and checking with NJSBA was put back on. And the reason it has been there with our district for the last two and a half decades is over 20, like two decades is because the new board gets to decide what policies they want to adopt by. Right now, we we did not adopt them. They're not in effect. So I just, just so I can clarify, I'm sorry to cut everyone off and I'm just a little confused. So, so if the stance is we have no policies in place, then school shouldn't be open tomorrow. This board meeting shouldn't have happened. Everything this board has voted on should not have taken place. That's in essence what we're saying. That's not the, and, and I'm not a lawyer and I'm not, you know, thank God, but the essence of the law is some districts readopt them, some districts don't. It doesn't matter because the policies are in place to allow the district to continue to run. I, I would imagine that anyone at the county level, anyone at school boards, if you got an opinion, any, a legal opinion from school boards, legal opinion from our attorney would be, it's more an, an effect to say, if it's 4-4 and you vote down this policy, these policies are still in effect so we can still educate kids. Because if we're if that's your case, then we have to close up school tomorrow. Mr. Giordano, yeah, no, with I, all, Mr. Giordano, with all due respect, I don't want you to put words in my mouth. We are only talking about three policies, not all of them. We are saying we said. are willing to readopt all policies except three, and those three policies are not going to go with your scenarios of oh, we can't open the schools tomorrow, and if we followed protocol. And what we have been doing for the last two and a half decades, this resolution should have been on the reorg agenda. And what we have been seeing is a pattern of we, we are allowed to ask questions. We we get we quote state laws. We we basically go to the same NJSBA, call the attorney line, and then we get a revised agenda four hours or three hours before the meeting with some critical resolutions missing. This is the second meeting that has happened, and I want to put this on the record. This is not okay that we get a packed agenda with open questions and missing questions or, you know, we have, we just amended the designator of warrants. I think this has been going back for the last three weeks. So with all due respect, we are not saying we are not going to adopt all the policies. So please don't spin it. Please don't put words into my mouth. We are only talking about three policies. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I would recommend you move on. I, I also just want to comment. So um, on H, the classroom book kits, um, that is from our grant um, that we got, the high impact tutoring grant that I had talked about in the about we talked about um at the December meeting for the curriculum committee. Um, so this is really exciting because this is all grant money and we're able to buy stuff not only for the tutoring kids, but for other kids. Um, so I ask that we uh, push this forward. Um, and it's very exciting for our schools. Okay. Um, 
I want to go back to. Yeah, and um, just on that, I'm that sorry. Pam was saying, those kits, that $17,000 from the grant that we don't have to have out of our budget is for our, to keep. We get to keep all that, all those classroom kits. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I'm still looking for a vote on my amendment to 131. I call for orders of the day. That, that's Which means to that's, go back to the agenda. That's that doesn't have any effect because orders of the day have to do with you want to go to some special order and there's no it special says make order. Follow agenda. We're on a motion, so yeah, I ask right. that we call for. Are a you vote. saying we're not following the agenda? Yeah, we certainly are. We're we're dealing with A through H. Okay, so readapt policies. Yeah, I'm asking. Okay. Let's so we'll okay, we'll, so we'll, next... we'll see the motion through, Tom. Let's let's take a moment. We have we had a second. Let's vote on the motion on eight, on one on... my amendment to one thirty one to one thirty one. Okay, was it? That's to, correct, right? Basically, to revert back to the prior policy, prior version. Correct. Okay. Roll call. No, because I cannot vote on something that one I have not seen, and two is illegal. You you've seen it. Sorry, uh, you're, you're only allowed to pass version of it. I don't know point exactly of order. what point you're of order. You're only allowed to vote at no, this point. It's not once the voting starts. There's no, no more debate. Be, Just it would be up. abstain. You have the right to vote. No, or abstain. It's, I'm going to abstain because this is not. This is not. Is a no. It's a... Roll call. So just so I'm clear, who was the first and who was the second? It's, for that, I just wanted Tom to clarify. Made, Tom made the motion. I moved it. Yeah. So, did you second it? Yes. Just to, right now, just to modify the agenda to no. adapt to to have the policies be readopted with bylaw no. one thirty one, reverting back to no the the, the this is an amendment to one thirty one thirty one thirty you you want to revert yeah. one thirty one to the most recently yes. and approved once we, once we, version which once is August twenty twenty two amendment. Then we can go to the main motion, which is to readopt all policies. But Correct. again, you're putting in a motion that is not on the agenda. That right, you're you're the adding an agenda policy. item that's not subsumed that's within there. Like that we modified the warrant, but the yeah. modifying of the warrant was right. within that yeah. warrant this is, this language. Is standard Robert's Rules of Order. I don't know why there's any controversy here. You have a but policy. We'll, you have a motion. We're, we're, Your we're main motion is to adopt policies. Or readopt policies. It's under D, right. technically. And part of that is policy 131. If we're looking I at could, all policies. If I wanted to, I could say I want a roll call vote on every single policy. I'm not doing that. I'm just saying let's deal with 131. And if the presiding officer agrees with us, I think you need to. We're going to get a roll call on it. Yeah. Yeah. So the roll call started. And who's next? So we have the two. And this is the revert. Policy 131, correct? To the yes. most recently approved yes. version and, of it, which I have in well, August 11, 2022. One is, is that right? And on the website, it says 2022-08-30. Jordan, I urge you not to do this because this is setting a precedent for bad behavior. But it, it is, not... it, the only I'll say is it is on our agenda for D, but technically. D, right, we can amend D. We can amend a specific policy that would require. He's, but he's, he's asking for an amendment under item D. But again, so it's not up. on item D. He's not amending item D. But the blanket if for D covers all of our existing policy policies. from item D, fine. But he's asking to amend a policy that needs a first and second reading by our own standards. And it needs a 48-hour thing. And I haven't seen it. So no, I cannot vote on this. And I think that you're making the wrong decision going against counsel. We, we've technically seen it because we voted on it, because we voted on the prior. And so we voted on the update version. So vote no. Vote no. I don't I voted on the prior. I've August, August 11, 2022. Maybe this is here. I don't know. But what I'm saying is I have not It is. Seen it it is. We're, we're asking to revert. Tom, is, are you asking to revert to 2022 or 2001? Can you clarify? The uh, to, to clarify. Uh, what previous on, version on are you the, asking to revert to? On the website, to? you know, you go the little pull down list. And there's a published version, and the next version that comes up is labeled 2022-08-30. And if you look at that actual policy, it says last revised February 15, 2001. But I wasn't given printing notice to be able to review this policy for myself. 
right? I have to go look at it now. Dr. Forger, also to Miss Stanley's point, I will note that you rely on Robert's rules solely. But I mean, your bylaw does say that the, this district governs its meetings by Robert's rules to the extent that they are not inconsistent with the statutes of New Jersey, the rules of the State Board of Education, or these bylaws. So there is a question about Robert's rules trumping your bylaws and the appropriateness of that. Well, I've, uh, may I speak to that? I, I, it's a little unusual to be delving into further debate when we started the roll call. Uh, so we would like the presiding officer to clarify, are we having a roll call? Or are we not having a roll call? We're roll calling on, on, on uh, 131, yes. Clarify which policy, as we stated, the policy that is in effect was adopted August 11, 2022. That's Dr. Right. August, 30th, August 30th. August, oh, I have I have her August 11, revised August 11, 2022. That's what I have. But You're asking you, to, re to revert to the most recently. The mo yeah, the most recent uh, version prior to prior August to the Prior to August 2020. To the, uh, current version. So that would be February 15, 2001. Yeah, yes, that's correct. Definitely not. Come on. Tom, you know this is wrong. This is an improper sorry, motion, and we are not can, following can, procedure. Can you, sorry, can you address you, the, chair, call, the chair of the board? debate and call for a roll. Mr. Hyman. Tom, the chair. For a while, this go, go to roll call. Jordan, honor. Pam, vote no. Not that's your right. Then abstain. Illegal. It's it's not illegal. It's it it's will move illegal. us forward. It'll move us forward. Dr. Farger. Uh yes. Mr. Keery. Yes. Miss Bradford. No. Mr. Hyman. No. Miss Jolly. Yes. Mrs. Connor. Mrs. Penner. No, and I'd like to state that this is an improper motion and we need to follow proper, proper procedure. So I don't want to vote. You voted no. All right, no. You're, you're voting no, correct? And Mrs. Stanley? I'm abstaining. So I have one, two, three, four, four A's, and I have three nays with an abstention, which the motion fails all right what no i would think no, wait, no, I'm the majority no. majority favor. He's check, he's yeah, checking yeah. it okay so we have tension isn't isn't done right an abstention is not a yay or a nay vote can we uh, can you speak into the mic the majority of the full board at abstention is a nay. If you don't need a majority of the full board, a majority of the quorum, uh, it, it, which is still eight, uh, it would be required to pass. So an abstention is a nay. It did not pass. No, abstention, there is a, a ruling, and I can pull it up right now if you give me two minutes, or we can take a five-minute break. I would like you to relocate it. Abstention should not be considered a yay or a nay. You might, I, I'm allowing the the board attorney to take five minutes and research it, and I will find it myself. Take five to, well, Mr. Chairman? What, what Chairman, you actually please. have here is uh, seven people voted for three, and that's a quorum on this question. Well, well, and, so, and majority of the quorum. We're going to make a motion for a five-minute recess yeah, so that council can look up what the extension technically is. Up yeah. too, so. Is there a second on the motion? To recess? So second round recess, yeah. Motion for the recess. Yeah. yeah. We're gonna take a five minute recess to confirm. Okay. Convene in five minutes. Motion passed. Because an extension of each element of the whole of the spectrum, you didn't need a majority for the spectrum. Okay. But she can make a motion to the same. Sorry. So what, what we've done is we've, we've, we've it passes four to three, correct? It on, passes, on yes. The, on the amendment of D, 
Yes. Correct. Okay. Now we're going to go to a vote, unless there are other comments or questions. We're missing Miss Akiri, I think. Okay. When she comes back, we're going to proceed with, unless there are other comments or questions on business items A through F and G through H. I, I Sorry, we're back. Unless are, are there other comments, questions on A through F or G? Disagree through when you're out. I just stated that yes, the motion did pass. Thank you. Is this also a vote on readoption of curriculum, or are we just voting on D? It's we're we're before we roll call, we're we're open on items A through H business. A through H, inclusive of the uh, tweak to D. Okay, I want to uh, make a, an amendment. I want to actually on E. I want to move to postpone to the August regular meeting uh, the adoption of uh, the curriculum. Why? I second that. Can you can you give us some color, Tom? Uh, uh, I can. Um, I think because we we okay. Well, she had her hand up first, so go so, ahead. So you made the motion. I know, but uh, you have to be recognized to speak on the motion. So okay. we the current curriculums have been adopted on August tenth. We've got this in writing from the business administrator for the current school year. The curriculum has been adopted on August in twenty twenty three. So there is no need for us to re-adopt the curriculum because everything has been adopted for 2023-2024 year. So if we were going to, and we got it in an email from the business administrator that if at all new curriculum has to come, new curriculum is written in summer, it will come up in summer. And starting from next reorg, Mr. Juskovic said that this would be put on the reorg agenda. But as of now, our curriculum has been adopted on August 10th, 2023. Go ahead, Tom. I really think uh, curriculum is closer to um, school year kind of stuff and should be done in August, um, as we've always done. And that gets a chance to fold in all of these summer curriculum writings. That's why I did it. Do you have comments on this? No, no, no. Uh, for what my two cents is, I'm not a voting member. Uh, all policies and all curriculum have been adopted for the entire school year. So to me, it's, it's if the board wants to not readopt the curriculum, just like readopt the policies, they're all in effect. It doesn't, you know, it's fine if they want to move it. I mean, if they yeah. want to table it, it's just, it's, it's, it, these are just. I've got, I've got Gail. Things. Go ahead. But we have two new courses and we have new curriculum that sometimes get adopted during the school year. So, you know, waiting till August to adopt a curriculum, sometimes we need a new course like we just had tonight. That was an, a mistake or um, like basically it was missed. It wasn't a new course. Cybersecurity was approved in 2022 and it was just the curriculum guide that was missing. And if there is a new course, it can always come and we are not saying no to that. So please don't put words into our mouth. If there is a new course that needs to be adopted, just call that out specifically. So, the sorry. entire curriculum, according to Jiskovich, was readopted on August 10th, 2023 for this current school year. So, Cybersecurity was not part of that though. It, it was. Correct. For tonight it is, right? Yeah. Is there Tom, are you so there's nothing new. The, the simple thing that happened is it was just left off in August. That's why we had to do it tonight. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that should be used as some sort of precedent for doing everything in January. It would actually be quite disruptive to uh, try to adopt your curriculum in the middle of the school year. What if the board came in in January and said, no, I don't want that course or something. And it's all readopt, yeah. not adopt. I mean, it could be very disruptive, and it makes more sense to me, in my mind, to just do it all in August. So the motion is to table curriculum until uh, August. It's it actually readopt. It's, it's actually a postponement. That's different than tabling. Okay. So it's a postponement to an August regular meeting. 
Okay. Uh, yeah, some of your questions on it. Yeah. I don't understand how to postpone it because I, I think it won't make a big difference. But if a teacher has an idea to do an elective and it comes to the board with a great idea for an elective class, we want to be able to have that freedom to put it in and write the proposal for the class, write the curriculum. It may not just fall in August. But why why can't we do that? Yeah, we the can. board the board can do that. Just like with the policies, the board could have is it's a readoption. So so, so if, if they table it's not gonna that. affect anything we do curriculum, just like the readoption of the policies that one the policies are all affected for the school year. So they're, 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 we're, we're talking the same things. So we're, we're talking, it says if the board wants to, the board could have on the readoption of board policies, so let's move it till August again and, re, and adopt them for that following school year whenever it wanted, this board could have done that. So it's not gonna affect the curriculum. If so, if a teacher comes up, you know, it's, same, it's our same process. If a teacher comes up in the spring and says, hey, you know, here's the process. We have an idea that we'd like to um, run into the class for, for the following year. They're gonna bring that to me. I'll bring it to the curriculum committee whenever that's formed. We'll go through that process, and that could be a one-off of this. But it's yeah, that this what, table in this or moving it, as Tom said, to to August is is a, is a moot point. Sorry. Sorry. So just real quick, um, our policy um, one five four actually does call for the. Um, it says Board of Education shall at the organizational meeting. So it feels like maybe this was not on the reorg meeting. It's, uh, they're moving it forward. While I do think it makes sense that curriculums get approved at um, uh, during the school year. Um, right now, this is as per policy. It says re uh, approve the curriculum for all grades. It's in policy 154. So um, annual motions and designations. So you, you'd like to leave it in? In I, I have no issue leaving it. Okay. Okay. So we've got a motion to postpone on the floor. Can we do roll call on that? The motion is to postpone to the August, August meeting. regular meeting. Second. Yeah, I think so I was second. And I said regular because I think we have a special meeting. Yeah. I'm distinguishing. I just want to get this straight. I'm putting it down now. Motion to postpone. That was item... The adoption of the curriculum. The adoption of all curriculum. Postpone. Postpone to the August regular meeting. Should, should take one second. Item E to August regular meeting. Yes. Dr. Farager. This is on the this motion, motion to postpone. Motion yes, 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 and yes, I, yes. And I just wrote that. Yes, one. I have so many things in front of me. So, yes. Mr. Keery. Yes. Ms. Bradford. No. Mr. Hyman. No. Mrs. Jolly. No. Mrs. Connor. Yes. Mrs. Penna. Mrs. Stanley. No. Motion fails. Other comments, questions on business before we go to roll call on all of business? 50. I just have a question on, um, I think this is item F, the transportation contract with Sussex County Regional Cooperative. Uh, just to confirm, the pricing that we see here, does that uh, give us some sort of benefit as a part of being um, in the cooperative? The I think this is the uh, pricing for the transportation route. Um, what it is, is they're having, they have one student that is being transported and this is kind of like a, what is the word I'm looking for here? Um, Kind of like a cooperative with another school district to transport that child, so that is what this it's share, a route sharing. So it's a sh so it's a yes. shared agreement yes. with with the um, other county. Yes, because we didn't have any other routes to have that child put on. Okay. And this was, I believe, it might have been coordinated through the uh, Morris Union jointure, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, got it. Thank you. I just have a quick question on classroom kits, which is H. Which grades is it for? And do these include textbooks? 
that this is going to be through K5. Um, I I don't know exactly what's going to be using. It's going to be used for manipulatives. I don't believe textbooks, but I can get that answer for you. I'm almost positive it's not textbooks. Mostly for supplies that teachers need to use for intervention, uh, manipulatives for students of that nature. But I, I will double check with the with the books. But I'm almost I, I'm pretty sure it's not books. And I don't hold me 100 percent that. It may it may be some guided reading level books that teachers may use. But it's really just for for supplies that teachers need to use for intervention to help students. So but I don't know off the top of my head, Mr. Kerry. Miss Jolly, I, I think that you had asked me about that. Do you have? Do you re recall the response for that? Because I I think I got that I from Mrs. Uh, Christine. Actually, I think she did put an email. Hold on. That, that's what I'm searching for right now. If I got it right here, Miss Jolly. Hold on. And I think it was K to five, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, when I, I seen K the answer, I know it's K to five. Again, this is a grant. I'm just asking a question. What is included in the classroom kits? Do these include textbooks? Because a lot of parents are asking for textbooks. And if they're there, that's great. I'll, I'm voting yes on this. It's just a clarification. I get it for you, Ms. Kieran. We both have it. So. Here we go. Oh, I clear, let me clarify. The math intervention materials for each three five school that are being purchased with the New Jersey High Pact grant funds. Um, so I, I I would assume materials could could be a boatload of. If you can get back to yeah, me, yeah, fine. just send yeah, me. I will, get, I, will I will specify for you, Mr. Gary. No problem. Thank you. Tom. Yeah. Um, on the standard operating procedures, uh, that's a, about a ninety-seven page document, and I haven't had a chance to. And we just got it. Uh, uh, yesterday, I think it's a lot of material to go through. I will say uh, what I've looked at looks fine, but I'd like to little, have a little more time to study it. So I'm going to have to abstain on that. I think we got it last week, but it is a long doc. Well, it was part of the original packet. I can double check that. But well, are you sure? I'll tell you in a minute here. Yeah. I thought that just came out yesterday. Let's see. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not following what you're saying. Is You're saying something about. The standard, standard operating, procedure operating in here? procedures, about a 97 page document. You're right, Tom. Don't You're right. It, the, yeah. the, the attachment came yesterday. Well, it, say... are we, if we're referring to that, that resolution that was stated in the reorganization meeting, that yeah. that resolution passed. But you just a... asked if you wanted to see the document and I provided it. No, it's it's actually part of this D. We're readopting re standard operating procedures. Are you saying that's no longer D? part of D? D? D has standard operating procedures. That's anyway. just for policies. What? what? And I think standard operating procedures means for policies. No, it's, we got a document. It, it, basically, how does the business office operate? That yeah, that's right? why under under right. the, res, the reorganization meeting that we did have, mm -hmm. I had a separate there for the uh, standard operating procedures to look at it, revise it as what it should be. Through the county office, it should be done once a year. So this has to deal with policies and not with the standard operating procedures of the business office, which are two different functions. But you provided this document yesterday. I provided that document yesterday at the request of Dr. Farger. Okay. Well, because when we did this back at the reorg meeting, yeah. he had asked me to see that, but I believe he may have not approved it. I'd have to look at the meeting minutes, hmm. but it was approved. And you asked to see it, and I provided it to you. I actually I provided it to the full board, so this way everybody could see it. I think Tom's saying he's okay with it. Just it's long. Is all you're saying? Right? Uh, <laughs> you, you're not an obje objection to it. You're just saying you wish no, you had not, more time. I'm not. I just want to make clear. I'm not really objecting to it, and it's actually a very informative document for anybody that wants to know how things work here. I want to just note the time. Yeah. It is almost 11. We still have public comment and yeah. we need to move on. So one quick comment is going forward, if we can ensure that every resolution, if they have an attachment, I we would really appreciate if they if somebody does a check and a balance that all attachments are included in the original draft that is sent to us, and then we don't get 
revi revisions and a final agenda four hours to the meeting. That's an um, only request. May, may I just interject? I, I, I want to just say one thing. And one of the reasons why we didn't able to get this, because I was answering questions for the last three days, and I'm trying to find out answers, not only that I don't have, I have to go and try to search those answers out from school boards, the county office, and several different places. So in order to answer the questions that you had proposed to me, which I did get back to you on, requires quite some time to do and getting people getting back to me. And by finalizing all those questions and answers and getting them into the document, which I did today for tonight's meeting, does require time. And I'd like to let everybody in this, this room know that. Yeah, so and, and I'm, I appreciate it. I appreciate you researching them. All, all I'm saying all is, order. all I'm saying is, for an effective meeting to happen, if you are not able to get an answer 24 hours ahead to the meeting, the same way, I'm expecting that that resolution be removed. If you do not have answers, like how you're expecting for new business, a 48 hour rule, you can't have it both ways. I'm going to say one thing at the Friday when it was sent out. We had a, a long weekend. We came back Tuesday. We had a snow day. I answered questions starting Tuesday. So I got all the answers there. If you don't want, if you're not satisfied, all you have to do is let me know. We'll take it off. So I'm just trying to abide by what was put out there and the time frame that I had so, to get it done with a long weekend. So just to clarify, so if if I get a final revised agenda, four hours or three hours before a meeting. And if I'm not comfortable with the resolution and I send in an email saying, I, I, I need more time to process this resolution based on the answers you gave me, you will remove it off the resolution. Sorry, hang on, hang on a second. There's, there's, there's the standard is not the same here. This is, this is my take, but I also, I'd love perspective on this. It, the, the board needs to conduct business. So if there are things, if we need to update the substitute list and if we, if that's, there's no, that, no, but that's not any individual board members call. If the superintendent, whomever he or she is interim full-time needs to do things that, that, that cannot be held to the same standard as one of us right. saying, look what I have in my bag. I want you to approve it tonight. So they, they should not be the same thing. There needs to be, and I, and I'm with you. It would be great to right. get things earlier, right. but we need to, we need to have the right for uh, right. an assistant, assistant superintendent, superintendent to say, for the course of business, this is when our meetings are. Yes, you here's can, what, here's what we need to put out. And it's not just a Berkeley Heights thing. This is this is a. I, I can tell you I this happens everywhere. Agree. Jordan, yeah, I perfectly agree. You can have final revisions for a substitute or a teacher or a replacement. Okay, all I'm saying is, That's since the reorg, since the reorg, can I? No, because other people had the Mr. floor. Hyman, and you went who back, you the don't have the floor here? Mr. Mr. Hyman, who has the floor here? Finish your talk. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. So if you can stop the thing. So all I'm saying is since the reorg, we're seeing major resolutions at the reorg meeting. Some of the resolutions that were on the original agenda were removed four hours prior to the meeting. We could, and then I sent a response back and I said, how is this happening? And they were not removed off the agenda. Today, I, I appreciate Mr. Juskovic's work. He gave back the answers, but the final agenda came four hours before with some major changes. All I'm saying is going forward, we need 24 hours notice or as Mr. Jiskovic suggested, if if I'm if a board member emails and says, I do not want this resolution because this came in four hours before, there, I think there that are, that's... There are, so at 2, 12 p.m., we received the final uh, agenda. There were there are, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven updates. Mm -hmm. uh, and they include things like the approval of meeting minutes, which is revised. So we're talking about words, mend hiring certified staff, approval, substitute supplemental personnel, approve extra teaching period assignments, approve interpreter stipends. It's, this is a course of business. So I, it, that's, is it major? Probably not that major, but it is course of business. I don't know if that's avoidable. I, I don't, I don't think that it is. I think we need to allow course of business to run. I, I hear you, but I think we also need to be more flexible with the district than we even are with ourselves. Is there a hand over here? Yes. Okay, go ahead. So yes, I, just to clarify, the things that um, Ms. Akiri is alluding to is not what was happening on the agenda today. Today was adding substitute names, changing dates of start dates, and um, most of that just needs to be done because like that, they have to go out and say, when did this person actually start? When are they gonna actually end, right? And they're waiting for those. So it was to be determined and then it got slashed and put a date in. That is not asking a lot of us. And you like that needs to be 
you you need to be honest about that one. Um, I also, again, it is 11 o'clock and we I need to, we're, we we're, need to vote. Yeah. We're going around I, in a circle. I, I'd again. like to clarify that, that then this, because we're living in a world without a board leadership or committees or chair people, no board member can just email the superintendent or the BA asking for things to be removed. There, there, there has to be a process. And I'm sure there is a, there, there is a, there will be a process. There has been a process for, for those things to happen. Or even you come to a board meeting, Hey, I'd like a little more information on that. Can we move that from the agenda tape? It's not that big of a deal. Just want to put that out there to everybody. That it, wasn't suggested by me, Mr. Giordano. Can we go to, can we go to a roll call unless there's was, yeah. Yeah. We're going to, we're going to go to roll call on business if that's okay. So items a through H. Yes, and then I have a motion by Mrs. Stanley and a second by Mrs. Penna. Uh, Mrs. Stanley. Yes. Mrs. Penna. Mrs. Akiri. Yes to A. Uh, yes to B with an amendment that it includes the board president, superintendent, the board secretary, or the treasurer. Um, yes to C. D, uh, yes to all policies and no to 155 and 164. I would like them to be reverted back to their previous versions. So it's a no. It's a, just say yes or no. Okay. So a D is yes to all, pol readopting all policies and a no to policy 164 and policy 155. And a yes on um, F, G, and H. Ms. Bradford. Oh, E is, e is um, a no. So E and the... And e is actually, I think... I would abstain for it because the the curriculum has already been up, approved. So E is an abstain, F, G, and H are a, a yes. Everything is a yes except for B needs to be amended, and D is a yes to everything except one policy one five five and one sixty four. And if I can ask everybody, if you're just going to tell me nay, that would be fine on on any of your resolutions. This way, I can just follow this. What you're saying is E, you're abstaining from. B, you wanted revisions, and everything else passes. No, readopting of policies. I'm saying I'm voting yes to all policies except for two. And I'm giving you the policy number. So, so those two policies, and that is item number B? No. D. 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 I'm sorry. Are 155. And 164. I have, yes. I have both of those. Thank you. Mrs. Bradford? Yes to all. Dr. Farger. Okay. Uh, no on policy 164. No on policy 155. Abstain on standard operating procedures. And no. uh, standard operating procedures being E? It's part of. Uh, is it D or is it E that you're referring standard to? Standard operating procedures is part of D. Yeah. So you're abstaining from D? Yes. I'm abstaining on. Standard operating procedures and uh, on E, which is curriculum, I'm saying no, and then yes to everything else. He he's only abstaining to the standard operating. He's readopting yes to all except one sixty four and what was all one sixty four fifty five policy one sixty four and one fifty five. Mr. Hyman. I'm yes on items A through C. I'm no on policy 131 as amended. Yes to the rest of readopting policies uh, and yes on E and F. Mrs. Jolly? Yes on A, yes on B with the amendment. Uh, yes on C, uh, D, uh, yes to all policies except 155, 164. Yes to E and F. G and H, all yes. Mrs. Connor? Yes on A, yes on the amended uh, B, yes on C, 
yes on D for all policies except 155, 164, and the 131 amendment already passed. My understanding is that yes on E, F, G, and H. Motion passes except for the policies 155 and 164. 155. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, that's correct. Okay. It's a tie. Okay. Move to finance. I have a motion for items A through D. D as in dog. Just give me one moment. I've lost that page. Okay, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I, 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 I had it all mixed up. Yes. Uh, you're, you're making the motion? So moved, yes. Second, Bradford. Comments? Questions? I do have a question. There is an open question on one of the, the checks as it relates to coverage in the contract. I don't know if you've had a moment to come back to us on that. I haven't checked my email. What What are you referring to? There is one check number that covers, uh, it's 209413. We are waiting to hear if that is contractually covered. If you remember the question, I don't recall the question. I think it's tuition reimbursement. And the question was a particular tuition reimbursement. Is that covered under the BHE oh, contract? Oh, uh, that question, I um, have okay. to wait for the superintendent to, to answer that question. Okay. No problem. That was my only open question. Can, can you just give me the check number on that one? 209413. 209413. One four three. Four one three. Okay. Roll nine four one three. Good roll call. Uh quick thing. If we are waiting on confirmation, should we ask for this check to be resubmitted instead of voting no or abstaining from it? We need information from the superintendent on if this is contractually so should we just remove this check and resubmit it at the next board meeting? Well, who did the bills? We all did. No, we all did. no, 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 no. Let's be clear. The bills take about an hour and a half to two hours minimum, right? Going in the, into the office for 10 to 15 minutes to look through some checks that you want to see is not doing the bills. That's very, very different. And when people have to cover for you, that means that's an hour and a half to two hours of their day when they have to cover when you don't go. So yes, going in and looking at the bills, I give you credit for doing that every month, but that is actually harassing our staff because it's more work for them. And yes, you can go in and look at checks, but doing it every month just seems excessive. But who did the bills this month where they actually looked through everything and checked it off for our um, our staff? Who was the sign? I think it might be Tom. No, the, is the question to the chair? Because the qu all questions need to go to the chair. I, I, I don't know who was assigned. I was named. So here who tonight. did the bills? No, one? no one was assigned because there was no there committee. Was there was so no one no did one the bills. Assigned. No, we had we had Dr. Forager. Right. We he had was assigned. We had Ms. Akiri and Mrs. Connor. Yeah. And we reviewed the bills and we had you, a question. So again, reviewing the bills takes about an hour and a half minimum. Okay, point of order here. I'm not sure why we are debating on how much time did somebody spend. Did we actually look the through bills. the bills or we just looked so through I spent, certain checks? Okay, just so, to clarify, I spent, I think, more than three hours. I, 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 don't, I don't think we need to sit here and validate or justify. This question about did somebody review the bills from the board? The answer is yes. Three people went. They spent their time, reviewed it. Let's be respectful but, and but make an insinuation. But reviewing That's the all. bills is different than looking at specific things, right? Reviewing the bills is actually looking at the numbers and making sure that they line up. Is this a That's debate? very, very different. I, I don't think it's a debate. There's, there's a motion to approve A through B, A, B, C, and D. Correct. And I think your remarks are out of order. Can we go to roll call for A through D? No, no, no. My question. You didn't answer my question, Mr. Hyman. Sorry. I'm saying we are willing to vote on everything. There is a particular check number that we had an open question on. Yes. And I'm saying instead of putting it up for vote and we abstaining or saying no, and then it'll again get spun, is can we, because we we, we did not get that required information. What can a ta we, table approval is your question. No, to remove this particular check number. 
get the answer and then resubmit it at the next meeting. That was my question. Yeah. If we refuse to pay one bill, that could have consequences. If this is a student transportation type of thing and they're not paid, this could have consequences on the student's ability to come go back and forth to school. It's, it's to make it to, to, to provide clarity to, to uh, tuition, tuition reimbursement. Yeah, I see it for, to an individual. I would imagine, again, I, I would imagine at some point we all have to take a leap of faith. And I, and I appreciate your question, Mr. Curie, and, and that we should have had that answer for you guys ahead of time. But but if if we're cutting the check and it's labeled under tuition reimbursement, that means that course was probably already approved. It went through the proper process. I would imagine, at my experience, that the, the business office is not in the business of cutting checks and and and, and putting them on a thing. So I would imagine as the teacher who's who's trying to get that check or maybe or the staff member, depending on that check, possibly at a certain time, I, I think it would gum up the situation a little bit. I, 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 going forward, you're right. We should get those. If you have a question about check, we should be able to answer it when you're reviewing the bills or something ahead of time. But I, I, I my experience is I would imagine that's for tuition reimbursement. That's contractually in the in, in the contract. I, I, I trust you, Mr. Giordano, but there is this concept of trust but verify. And I'm being very respectful and I'm asking the presiding officer, I want to pay this. All I'm saying is there is pending information. So instead of voting no or abstaining on this, should we just remove this check number and put it on the next meeting? My instinct is we should vote yes or no on it. And if and if it if we get information that that is that this was cut for some reason inaccurately, we have that ability to make changes. Keep me honest on this. But uh, again, I'm I'm putting my trust that this was done in full faith along with every other. However so many hundreds of bills. Do I have to move an amend, move a motion to remove this check? Because I would like to do that. You have that right. Okay. Yes. So I move to resubmit check number 209413. Can I get a second? Um, yeah, I'll second it. I, I, I don't care for the wording, though. Would you like to change the wording before you second it, or you're seconding it as, as is? Well, we seconded it already, well, I guess. I mean, the, the wording should be, we basically don't approve till tonight. We don't approve it tonight, but pending imp, pending receipt of further information. Uh, so why would you not vote no tonight to that specific check if that's the case? You don't like to do that. You know, you don't like to do it. You're essentially doing that, though, by by We are just, it. no. How are we voting no on this? We are saying we need more information. You're, by not voting it. yes, you're voting no. No, not voting yes, no. I'm saying I do not want this check on the bill list because we don't have information. So I'm and saying- and We won't approve paying it if that were to go through. So we're voting no. That's your interpretation, which I disagree with. Not Respectful. paying equals not paying. That's that's a no. It can be resubmitted later. You though. can resubmit it later, sure. Okay, okay so you've got, your, you've got a motion and we've got a second okay. to, to table that check. Right or to postpone, resubmit it. Resubmit. resubmit this check for payment at the next board meeting. Right. Roll call. This is on the motion, AJ. Name only. On the amendment, isn't it? Uh, Mr. Kiri. Yes. Dr. Farger. Yes. Mrs. Bradford. No. Mr. Hyman. No. Mrs. Jolly. No. Ms. Connor. Yes. Ms. Penna. No. Ms. Stanley. No. Motion passes. Amendment does not go. The motion uh, amendment fails. Okay. Now can we go to roll call for A through D? Mrs. Penna. Mrs. Bradford. Yes to all. Mr. Keery. I'm abstaining from uh, check number 209-346. Two zero nine three nine five, two zero nine three nine six, and um, 
no on 2093 356, 209373, and abstaining from 209413. Do you want me to repeat that? Yes, I've ran out I've ran out of space there. Sure. Um what are the check numbers again that you are not approving or so, abstaining from? So I'm abstaining from my the reimbursement for my own fingerprinting. I think I shouldn't do that. So it's 209346. 209346. Yes, that's a fingerprinting reimbursement for myself. Then abstaining from 209395. 396. Abstaining from 209413. A no on 209355. And no on 209373. Um, and I think I'll abstain from the treasurer's report from December because I wasn't on the board and the transfer report also is from December, so that's an abstain. But the board secretary report is also an abstain. So you have B you're abstaining from, mm -hmm. C B, you're abstaining from? Yes, and, and D. D. Yes, thank you. Dr. Farger. I'll abstain on check number 209-413. Uh, yes, on everything else. Mr. Hyman? Yes, Tall. Ms. Jolly? On A, um, I'm abstaining from 209411 and 209413. And I feel I should abstain from B, C, and D as well um, for not being on the board at the time. This is Kana. Yes to everything in A, except um, abstain on check 209413. Yes to B, C, and D. Uh, Mrs. Stanley? Yes. So 209-413. Mrs. Jolly and Mr. Forger, that's three, and that is four. So check number 209-413 is at a tie, which would mean that we would remove it from the bills list, and everything else passes. Okay, comments from the public on any topic for those who are still here. I'm not going to read it again unless you really want me to. Hi, Chris. Thanks, Thanks for sticking so around. <laughs> How you doing? It's been painful, but I'm still here. And um, you got better words than that. Come Chris on, Chris Riley, one dear path. Um, uh, I don't know what's going on here, folks, but this is a hot mess. And um, I, is there some secret contest that, you know, we residents aren't aware of as to who thinks there's the smartest person in the room? Because that's what it looks like. And I really kind of encourage you um, to, you know, do what leaders are supposed to do again. I go back to my original comments about building consensus and collaborating because good luck getting a budget passed, okay? If uh, you spend this much time on what I perceive as to be a lot of form over issue, form over substance types of issues, particularly from two board members who have completely monopolized this meeting. Um, now that is your right, okay? But as far as checks go, I would just remind the board that you do have a full audit that is performed every year by public accountants. You have a system of internal control that that accountant reviews and relies on. Okay, they test that system of internal controls with compliance and substantive testing. You have every right to supplement that by looking at, you know, maybe a 
you know, a sample of bills primarily to educate yourself as to how the business operates. But I, board members are spending time looking at individual checks. I think it's probably more important for you to be looking at, you know, what's the process, you know, who approved that check? What is it for? So uh, as far as I'm concerned, this is your right to, you know, get deep in the weeds on this stuff. But from this resident's perspective, there is nothing that you have accomplished tonight that has helped to move student outcomes in this district forward. Except just incredible bickering, which is so embarrassing. I'm actually upset listening to you. And I expect more as a resident, I really do. My other comment, which I originally sat here to share with you is, and Jordan, you gave a prior resident extra time, so please don't cut me off. I'm almost done. I think I've earned it. Um, there's been a lot of conversation about legal bills and how we don't wanna spend all this money on legal bills and I'm right with you. But after witnessing this you-know-what show tonight and last week, you absolutely cannot function without an attorney. You are, you're incapable of functioning without an attorney present at every meeting. I, I don't even know how you'd be able to vote on resolutions without, I don't know, you don't have a name. <laughs> so, I mean... I, I don't like legal bills any more than anybody else does. And one last comment about Dr. Varley's contract. Boy, if I was Dr. Varley, I would have simply sent you all a resignation letter saying that as of June 30th, she is leaving and she does not intend to go beyond her contract. And you spent, I don't know how much time in the weeds on that one, because she didn't have to tell you she was gonna leave, okay, potentially before that date. She's actually doing us a di a, the district a favor by letting us know so we could start a process earlier rather than later. She could have just given you your nine, her 90 day notice, but she didn't do that. So I don't even know what that whole conversation was about, except in a colossal waste of board time. You guys, yeah, you better get your act together and fix this, okay? this is. This is, you're not going to be able to pass a budget if you keep this up. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Hi, I'm Nico Solon. I'm the vice president of the BHEA. I have a question for a direct question to you, Mr. Hyman. You can direct them to me. Thank you. Not sure I can answer them all, but. Sure. It's a clarifying question. So we're just asking about the check. Does that impact a member of the BHEA? And what was the outcome of the check? Because the BHE has an agreement with the Board of Education regarding tuition reimbursement to help teachers advance their skills and, and gain abilities and degrees to improve education. So that's our two questions. Again, what is the outcome of the check? And does that check impact um, one of our members? Thank you. Thanks for your question. We'll, we'll, we'll address it. Any other Anyone else who made it to the end? <laughs> All right. Do you want it or AJ, do you want to address the, would, the two part question? Send that, I would send that to Mr. Jesuits. I'm not sure. I didn't, I didn't look at the name. The name's not on the check, is it? I don't recall. I don't recall the person's name off the top of my head. Um, I, I would imagine it's it's probably BHEA staff person. We can find out for you tomorrow and get back to you. Mr. Giordano, I think it's a it's a non-teaching staff, and that was our question. The reason for abstaining, okay. The reason for board members, I wanted to vote yes on it. The only clarifying question that we asked was the exact same question Mr. Sullivan and the vice president for BHEA asked. We asked the administration, is this person on a BHEA contract? If it is, we were willing to vote yes. Right. We did not get a yes or a no. If we had that answer, 
we won't have abstained. Fine. Thank you. No, I understand. Thank you. I have a question. So, Mr. Jiskowitz, if that is a BHEA employee, what is the implication of having that check removed in terms of contract? Until an answer is sought, uh, would be put on the bills list for next month. But isn't there some kind of contract in place? I don't have any of that information off the top of my head at the moment. I just want to clarify, we don't have those contracts. And I think Mr. Jiskovich offered to share the contracts with the new board members and everybody tomorrow. Thank you. Just try to... okay, closing public comment. You need a time check on that? Or it is 11.24. There, there you go. In the East. Uh, new business, which we actually have a couple of items. Do we want to tackle these items now? Table them or do we want to table? Oh, I just the have um, the the top one. I think pretty much answers one of the residents' questions about the audit report. So I would like to take like a couple minutes to explain that. So that was a question, Sai, about the audit report, uh, the timing of it, correct? Yes. And the extension so, question. Yeah, basically, uh, if you can let me open my computer because give me a minute. So the question was regarding the state law on the audit report. We had uh, prior legislation that required that audit reports be due um, within certain months, which would put us after the fiscal year closed. So which would put us on December 1st or November 30th. And I think there was proposed legislation, which was signed, I think on the 18th, I, based on the email from Mr. Jiskovich that we had got, um, this was, oh, I don't have the complete email here from Mr. Jiskovich. It was signed on the 16th or the 18th, and we, the audit is due on January 10th. It was signed the January 16th. January 16th, yes. So there was an amendment in place and our district auditor, before this was signed, for all practical purposes, audit was due on December 1st. So audit report was due in the district with all those checks and balances on December 1st. And as we speak on January 18th, we don't have an audit report. So, and I checked and we have been emailing the BA and he's been very helpful with us. We also shared information that for Union County, Westfield, New Providence, and other districts have already submitted them. New Providence actually had an audit report presentation and a meeting in December. And the governor in his veto message said, he's not willing to push the date to January 31st. It's due on January 10th. And we need to use the information from the audit report in the budget development process. So, our questions and the reason why it's on the new business is how are we going to, we, do we have a permission to delay? And I think the answer is they're short on staff, but that doesn't give us a reason to delay our audit report. And what are we going, are we going to, is there going to be an impact on QSAC? So I just want to, I know whatever has happened has happened and I don't want to harp on it, but maybe for future, for the next school year, whoever is the auditor, we basically ask him based on this new legislation that was signed on January 16th, that we abide by the rules and we get it within the stipulated time that is due. And if we can get a date, I know it's getting finalized by next week, but that doesn't give me a date. It's a TBD. So if I can get a date, that would be great. Thank you. From the auditor, of course. As I stated earlier, um, and I've checked down at the state, they said that they have about 49% of their audits have been submitted. One thing has been plaguing the whole entire state 
and I'll say state, and has been plaguing them since COVID, is that not only do we have shortage on teachers, shortage on bus drivers, shortage on aid, on aides in the district, all over, people don't want to be accountants. There's a there's a there's a shortage on those as well. So there are people that are not fulfilling their obligate. Well, I shouldn't say obligations, but having to fill vacant spots within the firm. And there's roughly about five to probably 10 firms out in the state of New Jersey that perform these audits. So I'm just letting you know, that's one of the issues that are plaguing this and has been going on for a few years. Other things at this point was, and as I've asked the auditor, we've had a turnover in the business office and we started the audit later than usual and did not receive some of the key items until December. Unfortunately, we had the same issues with many, with some of our other districts. So I'm letting you know that as well. That's, I just wanted to add that. What was the last part? They've been having some of the same issues with some other clients because we, they've had some turnovers in the business office. If you can move the remaining two new business items to the next meeting, I'm fine with, you know. Sure. So those are questions about legal spending and then uh, annual professional appointments that yes. expired, right? Yeah. As long as you can commit that these will get translated over to new business or old business technically for the next board meeting. It's a oh. special board meeting, so I don't know how that's going to work out. But Do you want it at the next regular meeting, which will be on the 26th? No, I want it at the next meeting, which is February 8th. So, And I have to advertise it as such along with the transportation. That is why I'm asking. Yes, thank you. Any other new business questions? Dipti? My question is, um, can we maybe get a better understanding of how we will initiate the CSA search process and the format of the next meeting, honestly? Uh, what things do we need to come prepared with? Uh, or can you just... I've, I've sent out an email regarding that as well, letting you know that I have collected. I started it the day that I came back from vacation. I solicited proposals from five search firms. I've also was able to get an interim list of superintendents. I informed the board about that and let them know that, that you'll have that come uh, the February 8th meeting. Is that five plus NJSBA or four plus NJSBA or just five firms? No. Four plus school boards. Okay. Angela? Yeah. Will we, for the special meeting, will there be an exec session? Or it would just be a regular meeting, special meeting. Or it's obviously depending on whether we have president or vice president at that point. I mean, my, my sense is we, we wouldn't need a president, vice president to have an exec necessarily, but um, I'll leave it to you guys. Leave it to me. I think according to our policies that we just readopted, we can have an exec session with a temporary presiding officer like you and uh, all i'm looking for is direction because without a, a, a right. president a vice president that's what we you, need you but need hopefully we can have somebody not to start with exec you would need to start with the depending upon what happens out of the county office you may need to invoke your other policy and start with the election of a presiding officer so you wouldn't be able to start with exec or shouldn't start with exec uh so may i make a suggestion because I think we have advertised all our meetings and even the special board meeting to start at 7.30. I think we need to advertise that it's going to start sooner because based on what happened today, we need to start the public session of the meeting at 6.30. That way, if we have an answer or if we're going to vote again, then we can go into exec at the end of the meeting or something. So can an announcement be made to the newspapers and stuff. Thank you. Yes, that'll be done. Um, that completely slipped my mind over the course of, of the three days of doing what I was doing, uh, as I stated earlier. So that was my fault completely. I did not realize it. And plus having that snow day on Tuesday didn't help. Anything else new business? Otherwise, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. All in favor? Second, 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 second. Who's the second? That was Dipti. All in favor. Yes. Uh, yes. Aye. Aye.